<laughs> All right, boom, and we are live with the Sawscast. We are having a good time over here. This guy's out there. Welcome to Sawscast, episode 87, Masterclass on Picking Up Chicks with John Anthony in the house. I thought Mark Anthony would be here today. I like, <laughs> where's John Anthony? You anyway. let me know when he is. <laughs> let me know. Um, anyway, this is where Sawscast, uh, this is Sawscast, where finance meets romance, the sexiest financial show in the world. And uh, our goal here is to help you gentlemen out there get paid, Late. laid, and, and do, do it your, your way. way. So I brought the best of the best, best in the West, best of the best of all the rest in here to help you accomplish these things. Um, you see here these lovely ladies on the panel today, returning characters. We've all known them, we've seen them, we love them. We're gonna talk to them. But first time, first time caller, long time listener, John Anthony's in the house. <laughs> dating, uh, dating expert, relationship expert, male self-improvement, you know, we talk about getting paid and laid. I mean, you are the getting laid dude. That's so, my part, so welcome dude. to the show, brother. Thanks. And you flew in from Brazil. Brazil in the house. Mm. Yeah. So, um, we are about to spend the next two hours picking your brain. Some of these ladies got some strong feelings on what you do. <laughs> some of the men out there also have some strong feelings, favorable, unfavorable. Fair to say, you can take the heat, though. Of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. We in the house. All right. Going down the line here, uh, the my friend, comedian, actress, voiceover, one of the most famous voice actors in Brazil, apparently. <laughs> yeah, we were Amber just Joy Lane's in the house. She's here. Give a little. Uh, What's up, guys? Give a little, give a little wave. Back. To Amber's right, my left, Rebecca Barrett. She's here. She's the coolest housewife in all the land. Oh, I like that. I think so. <laughs> That's just my take. Former feminist, current proud vocal housewife. Mm -hmm. She let out that sigh. <gasps> <sighs> and it just was like, now I know what it's like to be a kept woman. I'm trying to go through that transition and figure that out. I don't know if that's for me. And uh, last but not least, the co-hostess with the most is Natalia Del Valle. She's Hi. usually on the ones and twos over there today. Yes. She's here. Next how you to the doing, sauce Nat? Man. That's right, sauce man, sauce man. Nat, how you feeling? What do people need to know? Get us started today. Because we're getting right into this thing. Yes. Well, happy Thursday, everyone. Happy Saucecast Day. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, make sure you guys like today's video, comment, subscribe, and share, of course. Uh, there it is. I love when you guys do that. Oh, that um, is so cool. Yes. And then I'll be reading Super Chats. So give us some Super Chats for our guest today. It should be very interesting. We had some pre-podcast talking, mm. and um, we've got some questions that we want to unravel a little bit. So let's get this party started. All right, let's ready? get this party started. Let's get it going. Okay, you ready to party? I'm ready to party. Um, all right, cool. Ladies, you guys excited? Yes. John yes. Anthony? Of course. All right, let's do the sure. demo. So I know Rebecca's relationship status. I know she makes her money. I ask her that every single time. <laughs> I also know your situation, unless anything's changed. DM Amber. She's available. She's fun. She I keeps some, it light. I she keeps it tight. from the cast. There we go. Yeah. She's prettier in person. And if you think she looks good on screen, check her out in person. Live show every uh, Friday, Saturday. Friday, Saturday down in Miami. But John Anthony, I'm going to ask you a question that I usually start everyone off with. Tell us your relationship status and how you make your money. So I've been a dating coach for about 11 years, since like 2012. And right now I'm in an open marriage with a Brazilian girl, right? So it's open just for me. We have three dogs, no kids yet. It'll be too restrictive. And basically I can do whatever I want, basically, almost acting like I'm single. And then, you know, we have a loving thing. I have a second place as well. So last year we tried living with three girls and that was kind of a bit of a nightmare because it was just nonstop drama. Basically people telling secrets all the time, fights every day, yeah. right? Different girls in the house started falling in love and it was just kind of a mess. So we ended up moving out of that. We moved to Sao Paulo from Florianopolis and I just kind of do my thing on the side and then we have our relationship together. Mm. Boom, and how long have you guys been together? It'll be three years in about a few weeks. Martin. Of together or marriage? Uh, together. Okay. But Three years of together. Married, married for about a year, year and a half. Okay. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, here's where I want to start today because everyone's like, oh, we're talking dating, you're talking money. Is this a money show? Is this a dating show? It's both. This is where finance meets romance. So, what I want us to usually start off with is a little bit more business friendly money concepts, and then we can have that bleed into relationships and all that. So, here's where I kind of want to start. There's this whole concept these days almost a debate over uh, a work-life balance, okay? Mm -hmm. Hey, you gotta have a good work-life balance. It's like, hey, you work too much, you gotta chill out, or it's like, you gotta work harder. There's this, like, this push for a four-day work week these days. There's other people that say, you know, work seven days a week, you can fucking sleep when you die, like, enjoy. So there's this whole debate. 
So um, what would you say, you know, you've slept with over 1,500 women. We're going to get into that. Yeah, you guys were asking about that. What? That's a what? <laughs> you guys were asking about that before the show, and the girls were yes. like, oh, my Whoa, God. Yes, taken aback. <laughs> but what has been your work-life balance up until now? So I haven't had, like, a, a steady, like, you know, office job for about 10 years. So that definitely helps because when you have, like, total free time, you can see a lot more girls. So I, I tried to live where, you know, all the biggest party scenes were. So I lived in Vegas, San Diego, Miami, abroad. I was living in Ukraine and Poland, uh, Portugal, London. Um, now I've been in Brazil for three years. And Brazil's my favorite by far. And we were talking backstage. She's actually Brazilian. And you did voiceover for like a Brazilian Thank cartoon you. that's like pretty famous. I was texting my chick. She's like a huge fan. <laughs> so, um, you know, that I basically had like an open schedule. And that, you know, that just gives you total freedom. So I, I run the company, right, on the side. But it's, it's pretty flexible in, in that ter you know in that sense for a lot of guys like when I have clients if they're working most of their time they have like a couple hours a week to date it's they can only go on like one or two dates a week yeah so having an open schedule is is pretty imperative to have a lot of options so if we're gonna do some numbers by the way Deli Jorge can we turn up John a little bit if we're gonna like so for I have this debate with my friends like I have yeah. I have a friend uh, I have a rule that I don't mention people's names but I will gladly talk all about them it's just that don't say their name <laughs> and my friend you know, one third of your life you sleep. So let's just eliminate that. So we're talking waking hours. Um, I say, what's your work-life balance? Because this guy is trying to compete with you in the categories that you've excelled at, if you know what I mean. So he's like, I'm 50-50, bro. I'm 50-50. I work, and then I go and socialize. I said, that's, that, that's pretty aggressive, because I'm more the 80-20 rule. I'm working. I'm building a business. I'm doing my thing. I'm establishing, you know businesses and business models and podcasts and everything and then a weekend warrior comes rolls around i'll take 20 percent of my week and you know live it up have fun party so could you put a number on your actual work-life balance for a while it was like mostly fun right? like 90 percent, 95 percent, right so once i made like digital products or if i'm running like a boot camp tour with like live trainings then the rest of the year is like time off right? okay but now it's shifted, so we're trying to scale our company up. So the past few years, we've you know been really growing our operation, and so now I'm putting a lot more time into work, which cuts into dating time. But there, there was a period for a while, like when I was going pretty hard at this stuff, where I even thought that like going to the gym was just getting in the way of dates and stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So th I, I'm a, oh this God. is the reason that I'm establishing this stuff up front, <laughs> and then obviously I want to get everyone's opinion on this. So you said 95% of your time you were focusing to the yeah, I was, I was, social life, not work. Yeah, I was drinking like almost every day for like 15 years. Mm -hmm. so I was out at the clubs. I was on dates drinking. I had girls over all the time drinking with them. And then eventually it just got to be like too out of control where I was like drinking around the clock. You know? So I quit drinking like three years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's when my business started taking off. Mm -hmm. right? Gotcha. So I started to focus more on like actual, you know, like building something really big instead of, you know, just I was basically screwing around just for, you know, not really... Just treading water financially. Oh, gotcha. And then things took so off. So your finances did take a hit because you were partying yeah, for so sure. much and drinking so much. Yep. By, by the way, so what do you think is a healthy work-life balance? Meaning you were at 95% partying, lifestyle going out, 5% work. Yeah. My buddy that I just mentioned, he's more 50-50. Well, it's changed. I'm more 80-20 yeah. work, you know, party on the weekends kind of thing. You got Everyone has a balance. Yeah. In your opinion at this point, after doing all you've done, partying, women... Sex, drugs, rock and roll. What do you think is the ideal work-life balance at this point? I think like once guys start to get good at this, it's easy for it to start taking over. Like clients I train, like they start having problems where like, hey man, I'm skipping jujitsu, I'm missing work, I'm doing this. What do I do? I'm like, you gotta have some discipline, right? It's always more fun to go bang a new chick, but they have to make sure the rest of the stuff in their life is in order. So a lot of the guys like once they get good at this, they just get kind of addicted to it, or they just start seeing more and more and more girls and letting things fall off. So for me, I, now I prioritize, you know, like gym, business ahead of girls most gotcha. of the time. Mm. Yeah. So, and to be clear, do you, have, do you have an actual breakdown of like, the number? Like, oh, of the, the... Yeah, yeah. like you were 95.5, so, now you're what? Oh, oh the, the percentage. Um, it's probably, I mean, we're, we're doing a lot, of, I work a lot now, right? So it's, but I still, I still see a couple of girls a day besides my own chick. So it's, you know, it's, it's slanted more towards business now. So I'm able to sleep with about 100, 120 new girls a year comfortably while working Jesus on business. Christ. Yeah. Not okay. the number, the percentage. The percentage. Oh, yeah. yeah. Percentage. Work, I would. I would say it's probably like 75 percent work now. Wow. Yeah. Quite the shift. You went from 95 percent. If 
five percent to seventy five twenty five. Okay. Yep. We haven't even started getting into the juicy stuff, the yeah. dating, all the women. But you got Amber and Rebecca over here, eye rolling, side eyeing. <laughs> they want to, all right, what's the deal? So, Rebecca, I'm sure you have a question you'd like to ask John, and we'll open it up. I have a question? I don't know. You're doing a lot of side eyeing and eye rolling. I'm just, I'm, maybe comment. I'm concerned. What are you, what are you concerned, concerned about with our friend end? John? Have you been checked? Yeah. You turn in the mic. Like, like every day? Not every day. No, I, I made a video. You go, you go to the doctor, though, frequently. Yeah. What's frequently? Like, every couple months. That's not enough. That's not it. If you're, if, you're seeing, if you're saying that you're comfortably seeing 100 girls a month. That's an HPV super spreader right there. No, not per month. About a, per year. About oh, per years. year. Yeah. But you did say multiple girls in a day. Yeah. But you've slowed down over the years based on work. and. So I, he I said he scaled up. <laughs> I mean, I, I, see, I basically see a couple of girls a day now, and then okay. I live with my girlfriend. And For do you find, are you, is that more of like a internal accomplishment? Like when you sleep with these girls, do you feel like, like, yes, like, is that something that like you feel fulfillment from? Or is it just something that like, it just became a lifestyle over the years? Yeah, it became a lifestyle, but I also think, you know, it, I haven't found too many other things that are as much fun as like sleeping with a new hot stranger he's passionate <laughs> is, what is your goal with that because you say you, you track you track the amount of girls that you sleep with yeah. so is there like a specific so, yeah goal? so like back in the day i thought like my lifetime goal would be like 100 girls right i remember telling my roommate at the time i was like i just want to be able to sleep with 100 girls that'd be really cool and he's like that's not possible and i was like yeah i know it's not possible but that would be like a cool mm -hmm. thing to be like oh I, I had triple digits and then in your life that was your first goal yeah and so that that happened in 2012 and then i was like Oh, what if I could sleep with a thousand girls? And that seemed way out of sight, mm -hmm. but that happened at the end of 2018. And I haven't really made a new goal. It's not. It's not like I. And I wasn't really ever striving for that. Mm -hmm. It just happened as a byproduct of figuring out how to do the whole process very effectively. Gotcha. Well, and so, a famous quote that I always say is by our good friend Kanye West, who's uh, you know, <laughs> not controversial at all these days. But Kanye would always say, "I don't know what's better, getting paid or getting laid. I know when I'm chasing one, the other's getting away." Mm -hmm. yeah. So. How did your finances take a hit dedicating 95% of your life to getting laid? Like, yeah. what was the, like, what did your money, must have not been up to par? Was your, was your savings, your investments, your business model wasn't all there? What, what, were, the, what were the opportunity costs that you missed yeah. banging your way to the top? So, yeah, I had, like, a work-from-home job, right? I was working for IBM. That was, like, 100% from home. I could do the work in about four hours a week, and then I would have the rest of the week off. So it was kind of like I was unemployed but they were paying like 120 grand. So, and I always like lived very lavish, even though I was neglecting, you know, the work side. Um, but like I said, I, I didn't have an office job after like 2012, 2013. And then it was just, I would be like messaging people in Facebook groups before I like made a YouTube channel and stuff, being like, I'm pretty good at this stuff, I could help you. It was kind of just like starving artist type thing, mm. right? And at one point, I just got a whole bunch of credit cards. When my credit was good, I got a whole bunch of credit cards and loans and then got the limits extended and got loans from friends and stuff like that. And I was living like that for a couple of years, two to three years like that. Mm. And that was what, like in debt, paycheck to paycheck, yeah. but still but going still able out? To live, like I never, I never sacrificed uh, the lifestyle of like doing what I want to do. So I always yeah. like lived in nice places, drove yeah. nice cars, all that stuff. But, and I would find a way to make it work because I always had the mindset of like, if something seems awesome, I'm just going to do it anyways and I'll figure out how to make, you know, get the money to pay for it. Mm. So yeah. it, what you're saying, um, <laughs> It's almost like the antithesis of what they say, what the red pill community says about what men should do. Like the famous uh, phrase is I, yeah, I think that's chase excellence, not women. You're like, yeah. relax with the excellence, buddy. Hold the excellence. We're chasing women. So what would you say about that quote, the, chase excellence, not women? The problem is like, you know, it's, it's good to make money and stuff like that. But a lot of those guys, they say like, oh, you have to get the bag and then you'll get the girls. And mm -hmm. I have tons of guys that come to me. They're like, I made a lot of money. I got a good body. I started dressing nice. I still don't have the girls. Mm. And I'm like, you're well, still shitty. Yeah, you don't know how to talk to a girl. You don't know how to text with a girl. Yeah. You don't know how to run a date. Like, all the fundamental stuff is missing. <laughs> so I get, I get even, like, billionaire clients. They're like, we have a whole rich circle of friends. We all got rich. The only girls that want us are gold diggers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or people that want to use us. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what do we do? Interesting perspective. Mm -hmm. Also, he said run a date. Did anybody else catch that? I got mm -hmm. that. We're, yeah. He's running a lot of dates, which we'll get <laughs> into. That's how we run a date. Well, it's interesting <laughs> because one of the things I always say is that money doesn't live in a vacuum. It's not like I am a millionaire and I have all my money and this is what I do with my money and I have money. It's like, no, 
you want to go out, live life, have a car, go on dates, run a date, some may say, (laughs) have a lifestyle, go on vacation, take a girl out. Like money just enables you to do what you want in your life. Get your money so you can do what you want to do. You're kind of like saying, hey, good, I got it. Like the chasing excellence, that's one component. But the woman is sort of the other component, right? I always say like Chris Rock would always say, uh, you know, if a guy could bang a chick in a cardboard box, he wouldn't fucking go get a car in a house. <laughs> it's cardboard box season, right? So th- this perspective that you have on, you know, what we say here, getting paid, getting laid, you kind of almost prioritize getting laid and then almost using the what you've learned from women to monetize to yeah. get paid. Is but that you still had to fake exactly. it a little bit. What do you you mean? still had to fake it. That's why you took out loans and you took out credit yeah. cards because you couldn't just be like showing up you know, in an Uber, no car, no yeah. house, nothing in the cardboard box but and yeah. still like, get that like many women. treading water, right? Like very carefully. I, I usually only had about a thousand bucks in my bank account even when I was making six figures, mm-hmm. right? But that's all changed. Like, the business took off a whole great deal in the past few years. Like, we run like a multi seven figure business now. Wow. So that's because I'm focusing on it now. And quitting drinking definitely was like a huge component of that. Mm-hmm. And having a more stable lifestyle, like living with my Would girl. Would you say, yeah, marrying? Yeah. Okay, well, let, let's, let's address what Amber just brought up, faking it, okay? Mm-hmm. You've lady, you you live in Miami. You live in Orlando. Natalia, you're you know Orlando, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, wherever you know you're around. Well, that wasn't a negative thing. You're here. You're out here. here. Relax. <laughs> um, can you f- tell that like w- women, women's intuition? We've heard about this. I don't know. I just have a weird feeling about this. Like mm. we we talked about this a few podcasts ago mm-hmm. about like men maybe don't have that intuition. When you walk out the door, you're not worried about like. Am I going to get raped? Is someone coming out here? Yeah. Who's this guy? Women have that like sixth sense of like, something's creepy about this guy. I don't trust that guy. I don't know what it is. Way more than men. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, we men to. have a lot of skill sets that right. are, are a lot better or different women in certain categories. Women have that. Mm-hmm. That women's intuition, sixth sense. So do you have an intuition of like, this guy might be a fraud. I don't know. Is, is he, is he, does he really have what he says? Is this something I can trust? When you're out there having fun in Miami doing your thing, what, uh, can you tell when a guy is lying to you? What, what kind of red flags do you see out there? You're all looking at me because you know. <laughs> I'm I married. asked you. You live in Miami, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, the most experiences I've had with that have been in Miami, where like I'm on a boat with someone, and then he's like, okay, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. I'm like, why? Really? I thought you owned this boat. Nope. It's like, uh. oh, I, I rent these boats, or things like that. Or I've seen a guy with the, like, take me out, and then, um, a week later, I'm on a different app, and I see him under a different name. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah, I, I'm still learning. I, I think I try and think the best of people. Um, I don't always have that mm. that sense of what real... Because like, like I've said a bunch of times on the show, money doesn't really matter to me. It's honesty and character. Right. Right. Um, so I don't, like, I'm not looking at your what, how thick your credit card is. I'm not paying attention to that. Until situationally, I don't feel safe or something feels energetically wrong with them. Mm. That's when you know you're in trouble. I think, because yeah. the, when they're faking it, it's okay. Well, for most guys, guilty, in the business world, you kind of got to fake it till you make it, especially if you're in the sales world, you're trying to get clients. It's like most guys out there don't start with a Rolodex of clients, no, you're salesmen. business context. You kind of, whether you're an entrepreneur, you got to act like you've been there, you know, uh, talk to talk, then walk to walk. But guys kind of have to fake it till they make it. If you haven't made any money yet, it's like, you gotta kind of go get a cheap shoot. You gotta go to shoes DSW. You kind of, you kind of, kind of throw it together. You know, you might have a, you know, not a Movado watch. You got an avocado watch. There's a million <laughs> different things that you got to do to fake it till you make it. Is that a turnoff for women to find out? Yeah, you're really kind of broke, dude. Paycheck to paycheck. What do you think? Um, I don't think it's really necessarily like a turnoff. I think it is something to be wary of. Um, because you do want somebody, I mean, I look for somebody that even though they're not at a certain level, they see themselves at that level, you know, and they like act as if until you are. Um, now, of course, you're a little bit more wary, you know, you're paying more attention to certain things, you know, like who they're on the phone with, certain activities that you're doing, who's around, who's their homeboys. Like, I, for me, those things become more visual and up in my face than mm-hmm. um, necessarily like, oh, he's faking it till he's making it. You're talking say. more character. Who else Correct. is he dating? What's yes. his, you can, what kind you, of values does he have? Yes. That, like, you all right, how much money do you that. make? Yeah, you can unravel that without necessarily like, oh, like, you're a fraud, you know? Because... At the end of the day, you know, if you pick somebody and you end up with them and 
you know, shit hits the fan. You want to have that security, like, this guy got it, you know? He's able to figure his way out of it. He's, his mindset is strong, you know? He knows what it's like to not have mm -hmm. and, and, and be able to come out of it. So I think mm -hmm. that's what I more pay attention to, because, I don't know, I think when, when also men have so much money, like, you know, he said, like, at that point, women are like gold diggers. They're looking, like, to hop on the board, ra rather than like you meet somebody who's maybe like on their come up and you come up with them, you mm -hmm. know, you get to see that struggle and that journey and you value it more, you know? Yeah. Money is a little bit more important to That's you, true. rather than like, oh, he's rich, like I just wanna go on his boat. Like I've, I've never been That's on that. Rebecca. That's okay. definitely my story with my husband. When I met my husband, he, you know, he made substantially less money than he does now. Mm -hmm. And we Because he's got a good wife by his side, yeah. as I'm trying to say. And <laughs> also, he's just, like, what I noticed in him was that ambition, that drive to make money, to have a purpose, right? I think if a man is on his purpose and he's working towards something, that's the attractive part. It's not, oh, I'm flashing a Movado watch or a Rolex or whatever. If the man is like disciplined, determined, and looking to you know grow and to excel in whatever field he's in, that's the attractive part. And like um, I would say, I have like a Kevin Samuel's IKEA marriage, mm -hmm. right? So we built together, and now we're in a place where you know we live a very comfortable life, but we don't live in excess. We don't overspend. We don't have things that we can't afford. Mm -hmm. And what we try to do is invest in our family. Mm -hmm. Like that's where we're spending the money. And you know, the things I'm worried about is not the same thing as John no, Anthony's worried. Not, not I'm worried close. about diapers, you know? <laughs> yeah. and, uh, can I say one last thing on that real yeah, quick, yeah. real quick? Go ahead. That I'm more wary of a scammer than a phony. Yeah. So mm, what he did, it's kind of like manifesting you're projecting mm -hmm. the person you want to be. Even if you buy, if you buy the nice shoes, you live that life. You believe you live that life. You eventually will live that life, just mm -hmm. like he did. Mm -hmm. He manifested that. But a scammer who's scamming people out of money and scamming people and and doing bad deals—that is my red flag. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I don't care um, if you don't have a lot of money, but how you make your money—that speaks to your character more. Absolutely. So. So give the two words you said, you'd rather have a... A phony than a scammer. So what's the difference and what's the a pros and cons? A phony is somebody yeah. who's not exactly saying what they are. They are faking it, like yeah. you said. Mm -hmm. They are projecting a character bigger gotcha. than themselves. Scammer and a is scammer is somebody who's doing something wrong or hurting other people in the process. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. You know? So I don't you're believe bringing up, it's You're bringing good. up this terminology. What are you classifying He John was being as? a phony. You think he was being a phony? He's saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you think he's been a, was being a phony? Because he was pretending or projecting that he had money enough to get these women to even just go out on a date, obviously. But he wasn't scamming women out of something. They weren't losing something out of the deal. Mm -hmm. It's not like he was the Tinder swindler. Yeah, this exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that guy That's is a scammer, and that I have a problem with. Mm -hmm. If what you're doing isn't, I mean... Maybe you weren't honest about your money, but if you were honest with your intentions, which we'll get to, because that's the main thing I want to know about is how much do these women know? Not about your, mon your money and your wealth, but about your lifestyle. Yeah. Um, if you're open and honest, I have no problem with well, that. Well, I guess that's the question for you. All you looking for from these women were just... Sex. Sex and good times. There was no ulterior motive, or was that it? No, I mean, but you get close to a lot of them, too, in the process, right? It's not just, like, this hollow thing where it's, oh, like, Oh, he just has emotion, way. guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would typically date, like, six to 12 girls at once, right? They call it, like, a rotation or whatever. Mm -hmm. Over the years, it started getting a little more out of control. In Poland, there was, like, 17 girls mm -hmm. all at once. You remember their own other names? That? Yeah, how do you remember everything? At the time, yeah. yeah. Did, you have like a, did you have, like, a An literal assistant. Rolodex and, like, someone <laughs> checking there's like, the Yeah, names? I mean, there's, there's, like, a, no, there's like a file to, yeah. like, keep them straight, basically. <laughs> Do you I have, have files to keep them straight? Just like a little note file. In your phone? Yeah. Just like little notes about each one. Well, Brother, once there, once there's like dad 15, in jail. <laughs> I have, like at this point, there's 17,000 contacts in the phone, right? Mm -hmm. But at any given time, <laughs> I'm seeing about like 14, 15 girls at once mm -hmm. on the side. More than there are days in the week, guys. I have a okay. question for you. Based on like that reality and that you know, road you chose, 
what kind of led you to that? Did you grow up in a household like a single parent? Did you have siblings? Were you kind of like a shy guy growing up? Like what kind of rolled you into like even having a goal of like, I want to see what the no, I was, I was super shy. I was like the shyest kid in my whole okay. high school. So I was like, out of like 700 people in high school, I was probably the most shy guy. I oh. had social anxiety, general anxiety, panic disorder. Mm. I had like, you know, repeating looping thoughts. I'm hyper analytical, right? So I, what I brought into the dating game is like an algorithmic kind of systematic mindset mm -hmm. of like how to take things from meeting a girl in public or online all the way down to a date to hook up and keep bringing on the ones that you want mm. and how to do it not manipulatively but how to do it systematically where, yeah mm. Mm -hmm. okay well let, let's get into the system a little bit i got some more money stuff that i want to talk about mm. some dating stuff i want to i want to add in real quick to her yeah, point go ahead. like so that's i agree with what she said like because a lot of my clients people that are like motivated like a lot of the guys that are broke like say they spend the last of their money on my training a lot of them get wild success, even if they're living like, with their parents or something like that. And as long as, you know, as long as they're not dressing like super, super bad or like letting their facial hair grow out of control or anything like that, the girls don't really care that much, right? Oh God. And with the rich guys, Sorry. the rich guys are like, well, all I need to do is pick up my Ferrari and try my houses and I'll get her. And I'm right. like, no, that's not how it is. And you're going to send the wrong message, right? So yeah. I've always thought that money didn't really matter that much in getting girls. That's what I've seen from teaching thousands of clients. Yeah, my, so. I, I guess think it what, helps, but I don't think like. What's your, been your guys' experience dating a wealthy guy versus dating a broke guy, more a paycheck to paycheck guy? Like, there must be a difference. You're saying the money doesn't matter. I tend to disagree with that. The nicer for the, places, for the most part, it's, like a, it's like a threshold thing. It's a threshold, but yeah. it's certainly when you start dating, girl. But I'm talking about just going on dates. You know, if a guy, I'm not talking about fakers. I'm not talking about scammers. I'm talking legitimately dating a guy who's successful. He's got some money, for sure. Versus a guy, it's like, oh, this guy just took me to Taco Bell three times this week. All right, he's got to be struggling. Have you ever dated a super wealthy guy versus a broke guy? Yeah. Go ahead. Reveal the difference. Um, I think it's just a matter of what ranking of priority you are to that person. Like, I, I found when you date somebody a little bit more wealthier, you know, you're not as high as a priority to them because they have other things that are priority because work is. Now, when you're dating somebody who's maybe making a little bit less, you become more of a priority because they have more time on their hand. You know, they're trying to, you know, vet you to be their girl, to be loyal to you. Like they, I feel like those gentlemen, they put a little bit more work uh, into like keeping you. I, and then sometimes the men with a lot of money, they can sometimes behave in a way of like, well, you know, if this doesn't work out, I have all my success, and I'll just go mm -hmm. find another girl who wants to fill in the spot because I have all this money. So there are levels to it, and I mean, it's really a matter of what you're looking for and how interested the guy is into you, um, and also where they're at in their life, because you can meet a super wealthy guy, but he's not ready to settle down. So he's going to treat you like, you know, I don't want to settle down and you're just another girl. Mm. Or you can meet somebody who is wealthy. He wants to settle down and he does give you that attention. Mm. So I think it's a matter of like where the guys are at, uh, their income amount um, and like their intentions. But usually the guys who make less, they have more time in their hand to give you more of them. Can you tell when looking at a guy or just after your first interaction, how well they do yeah. income wise? You can? Yeah. What are the what are the <laughs> the signals? I've you're been like, out of the dating game for, for a long way time. Good. too long. Good okay, so go ahead, Nat. What, what can you tell about a man? All right, this guy clearly makes over six figures. This guy's a millionaire. This guy's faking. He's a broke boy. What 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 well, signals do you see? You see in like confidence, the way they speak to you. Okay, all you right. know so how <laughs> settled they are. You know, yeah. it's usually men who don't make that much money. They're like always on the go. They're always like, okay, this, we have to do the next thing and the next thing. And they're not, you can feel the lack of security with the gentleman. Hmm. You know, guys who make a certain amount of money, they provide, and it's not even so much like they tell you, I make this amount of money. It's more of the, like, I know I'm going to get roasted, the energy. It's more of it's what the they give off. <laughs> it's what, it's what you get the vibes. from the vibe the vibes. from them. Okay. So uh, that's usually. Yeah, go ahead, I Rebecca. Wanna, because I, I was in like the entrepreneurial space, um, so I would deal with VCs, venture capitalists, and stuff like that. So they obviously have a substantial amount of money if they're investing in companies. Um, but I think it's the access, too. Like, mm -hmm. And I think a lot of these girls that go out with very wealthy men, like these Instagram models that go out with these very wealthy men, they get access to things that they normally would not get access to. So that, to them, is something that is 
like toxic like oh I want more like I mm -hmm. need more of this because if I don't like I'm gonna settle for this guy now that's on a lower status right and so that is the thing that they start chasing once they get access to a whole new world yeah um like if you're starting to talk to like restaurant owners and hotel like hoteliers and mm -hmm. stuff like that like that's a I mean and on flying private and the guy owns the plane you know it's a different if it's a different uh, level of access that you're getting instead of you know going on regular dates which I am very I'm a huge proponent of going on just like average people going on average dates like yeah I'll take broken creative any day <laughs> really that, is that, so that's like something you are looking for no not looking for but I'm honestly more comfortable going on dates with people who have less money when I'm on a date with somebody who has, makes a lot of money I, I don't feel like myself as much because I didn't grow mm. up around that I, I grew up with family who prioritize sentiment over uh, material mm -hmm. like our gifts are homemade and they mean something versus mm -hmm. diamond rings and bracelets like that never meant anything to my family so I rather be going on like during the pandemic when I was in a relationship we we would just challenge each other to find out how we could make each other feel special in a you know 1400 square foot place and how we could still go on dates and that meant so much more to me than any kind of fancy place especially when I go on I I never order like an expensive thing on a menu it makes me very uncomfortable like last night I was on a date and the only thing I really wanted to eat there was a steak but I didn't do it because it, it was like over fifty dollars and I didn't want to order that mm. it was I'm, a first I'm date what'd you order that. salmon that's what was that, $49? <laughs> it was like Safe 25 choice. It was a big difference. Okay. And that felt so more So you're conscious of what the costs are of the meal, and you'll limit yourself, even though you want the steak, Amber, mm -hmm. and the guy should be able to afford the $50 steak. But it was steak. the first date, and I didn't know where I was with him, and, and I didn't, I'm not somebody who's like, I don't know, it makes okay. me uncomfortable you, to put a high bill. I actually do like that for a girl. But do you think I that like you that. did that based on, like, what you got from him on his, like, without saying like, I make this amount, did you order based on like what you thought his income would be on how he presented himself? No, I think he does well. I didn't think, I, was, I don't think about it. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't think about it. That's so not my first thing. Bad, right? so no, you huh? probably you just, you just feel bad about it? I, I'd feel you bad, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I wouldn't want to pay that. You don't yeah. think For about me, his income. I'm not thinking about yeah. it. I'm thinking empathetically, but I'm like, I don't want to cost this person so much. Here's how I thought. Here's how I'm processing what you were <laughs> thinking on your date. Okay, I'm on this date. Okay, I really want the steak. I really want the steak. Okay, nice to meet you too. I think I'm about to have the steak. I'm thinking about having the steak. Cool, cool, cool. I just really I don't want to order the steak because I think about I, mean, I definitely want the steak though. Hey, what would you like to order? I'll do the salmon. <laughs> <laughs> what? All you right. were thinking about is the steak. But that's you. You've got a good heart. Think, You're not no, using I it for the money. Uh, I didn't want to do in that. In women's mind, it's not the. It's not as clean cut as you think it is, right? It's literally you're having an argument with yourself if i get the steak what if he thinks i eat too much if i eat also, all of this steak like is steak manly is steak, really yeah okay. there's I so many that. that's what salmon, they think salmon is feminine salmon is safe <laughs> okay salmon is safe salad is safe that's like i'll take the steak, I, the steak. <laughs> I mean no, no, i do it like okay what are you thinking about getting i'm thinking about this and i'm like okay i'll you look at like the, the price thing. of his and i'm like let me okay, tell you if you're guys, gonna spend that on you to eat, that's then like, there's a deal. Like when they order first, by the way, their yeah. by the I way. conversate, I'm like, okay, got it. You got the bill, right? Okay, great, this is a good date. <laughs> like, first date, <laughs> how did it go? One through 10, one through five. Oh, I'm wondering how Five stars. Uh, 6.7. Out of 10 or out, out of, of five? Out of 10. Oh, okay, okay gotcha. Out of five, I'm like, so, all right, so, okay, so out of five, we're gonna give him a three and a half, whatever. Uh, what type of restaurant? Um, a gastro bar, but it was like the menu, you know, Miami. Yeah. So it wasn't like super, super fancy, but the prices were. Follow up question. Do you sit at a table or at the bar? Mm. We sat at a table. I like eye contact. Okay. Eye contact. And uh, was the table like a barrier at any point? Did you want to kind of be like. <laughs> you played footsies. Like a footsies. Eye? Did you want to get close or you like the barrier? Um, it depends on the on the guy and on the date. Okay. I didn't lean into lust with this date. I'm just gonna be honest. I wasn't like overwhelmingly attracted to him. So I went on a date with somebody that was mm. like, hmm, like I'm attracted to, but it wasn't like a lot, so that yeah. I could just play it cool. I don't know. If you wanted that steak, here's what I would have said. Hey, listen. <laughs> I would eat it. Family steak. <laughs> oh, family order it. style. 
We're doing appetizers. <laughs> oh, we're doing this. The, we'll have he some ordered drinks. the steak. Yeah. He ordered the okay, steak. Okay, so then you say, see, you, you should have ordered your steak, See, girl. You know, you know he ordered it, and I got a bite out of it, and steak. I was happy. No, the best, the the way best that, thing the way you can say is like, I'll have whatever he's having. There you go, save it. The way that I've solved this problem, so I've probably been on over a thousand dates. I didn't count those, right? But I always do coffee or drinks. Every time. I like those days. And if a girl's like really pressing, that, that's like not, she's too good for coffee or drinks, I don't go out with her usually anyways. Yeah. I, really? so, I, so I just want to have so it So that's casual. your rule, coffee or drinks? It's not because I don't want to spend the money. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's a casual way to get to know someone. That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I love day dates, by the way. I day like the day dates. dates. I love dating. Who's got time for coffee? Well, I wouldn't say that. It's that work-life balance. I'll get like ice cream. People are different the... during the day than at night. Mm. Yeah. People are very different during the well, day. But would you want to get to know them? Which one would you want to get to know more? You're going to spend more time with them during the day, I think. You say, really? In public. I don't know. Nah, he should be working during the day. <laughs> Here, <You know>? last, <laughs> co <laughs> last couple of money questions, and we'll move on to some juicier stuff. Thank you guys for being with us. By the way, appreciate you. We're, if Nat's going to be reading the Super Chats yes. shortly, uh, if you have not subscribed to Valuetainment Money, the channel that we do this on, Give us, a, give us a sub. Give us a like. Yes. Um, we got John. We got Amber. We got Rebecca. We got Nat in the house. And uh, we're delivering value for you guys today. Um, money. I want to talk money. Girls are pretty expensive, bro. I know you said that you're going on coffee dates, uh, drinks, don't t tend to not do dinner. What do you think is more cost effective for a man? Having one girl in his life, girlfriend, you're doing anniversaries, you're doing birthdays, you're doing vacations, but it's one girl. Or a whole roster of women Day dates, drinks, this girl's birthday, now we're doing this, all that. What do you think is more cost effective for the average guy out there? Um, it depends on what they're doing, right? So like usually say there's like 14 girls you're seeing, right? The first two or three are like the hottest, coolest ones you have the most chemistry with, right? And those ones you basically treat like girlfriends. You're going and doing lots of dates, boyfriend, girlfriend type stuff. The rest of the girls, it's usually just like a coffee or drink on the first date. And then other times usually just come over the house. Right? Mm. So when I hang out with them, it's usually they come over, they hang out, they leave. And so you're not really running up bills on dates, right? So you can, you can keep it cost effective that way. But I also teach my clients how you can set dates straight to the house for the first date. Mm. So I have a script, right? I can, I can go over that real quick. Yeah. So I, I have them text, do you like wine? Mm. No. Right? Oh. But first of all, you pick okay. the day and time. Right? So it's when are you free? I'm mm -hmm. free this day. Okay, let's meet Thursday at 7. Okay. Do you like wine? They usually say yes. Cool. Um, we could split a bottle of wine at my place and see how the chemistry is. Do you prefer red or white? Now about half the girls will say red or white, and I say, cool, see you Thursday, right? Sure, bring the bottle of wine, we'll see you yeah, soon. Yeah. <laughs> the, other, the other half will say, oh, I don't, I'm not that kind of girl, I don't go to a stranger's house for yeah. me in public, yeah. and I tested a whole bunch of stuff, and what won by far is I say, LOL, don't worry, I'm really laid back, bring pepper spray if you're that worried, LMAO. <sighs> and I don't even type LMAO, <laughs> but it, they usually laugh really hard, and that, <laughs> yeah, and that- Yeah, you can hear it through the text. And that convert, well, you know, they type ha 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 ha, like all yeah. that stuff usually. And then that converts like another half of the people that didn't want to come over. So about seven or eight out of 10 will come straight to the house. Oh. And so for the past year, I don't even ever do dates in public anymore. Really? If they won't meet straight to the house, they don't even meet them. Hey, because so here's the other thing is that those ones that still insist on the public date, even after the pepper spray line, a lot of times they don't even want to come home with you after the date or they come home and they don't hook up. That's what I found. So it's almost like a screen to see if they're what percentage well. of girls hook up on the first date? From coffee. <laughs> I want to know like that. Like 75 to 80. 80 percent yeah Where so is that because you're that good or these women are that promiscuous or is it a combination no, i mean of both? it's not even it's all you have to all the guy has to do is like be himself keep it lighthearted and fun not run out of stuff to say right not keep, make the conversation boring keep keep it non-platonic so that the girls don't just see him as a friend and then work into the conversation the idea of them hanging out afterwards which she might have various objections right like she might say well i don't know you i don't come with strangers so there's like safety objections there's a hookup objection. I don't go home with people I just met. I'm not that kind of girl. Um, they might say they have something to do afterwards, but, but I have like responses that I tell guys, if this comes up, answer it like this. If this right. comes up, answer it like this. This is systematic. Yeah. So here's what I'm thinking, because I, I cut my teeth in the financial world, cold calling world, scripts, rebuttals. We've all seen yeah, Wolf it's, of it's Wall a, it's Street. It's identical to sales. When it's, exactly. So it's like, well, you know, what do I have to do to ensure this account closes today? Well, is there anyone you need to speak to to make this happen? Objections, rebuttals. It's almost like you've taken these sales scripts and said, <laughs> instead of clients, these are now women. Yep. And I'm going to have rebuttals, scripts, boom, bang, funnel. red, white, but, funnel. But I and this be, is what you've done. But I want to be clear. It's not, it's not them pretending to be someone they're not. It's not manipulation or anything like that. It's just helping them. Because a lot of the, the objections come from the girl wanting to feel safe, mm -hmm. wanting to know that if she comes home with the guy and he doesn't want to hook up, that mm. he's not going to be Do you vet your clients at all? No. 
You said you vet your clients? In, in what way? What you yeah. mean? On, I'm sorry, but okay, I was with you in, up until now, but now it took a turn where I got really upset because of the just being a girl and how dangerous it is. And do you know how many dating apps there are turned into sexual assault and rape? From Hinge, from Bumble, a girl was tied up from a guy she went out with on Bumble, which she had to make the first move, right? So danger is out there for women. You're giving a man a script. You don't know which men that you're like taking on as clients. They might not all have good intentions. And now you're empowering them with a, it's like weaponizing it. So that makes me a little nervous, to be honest. But a, totally understand your concerns. Right. No doubt. But if, if you're John and you have a business model coaching men on how to improve and get women, what type of uh, vetting. vetting process would you like to see? Can he Meaning you? he can't be like, so are you a psychopath? <laughs> All right, no, great. You're like, like I what, think, I think what like, type of vetting like process? A background from a guy. Huh? The background checks? Okay. So That's like, one. Yeah. That's We're doing this 10 thing. years. Like, I've, I've helped thousands of guys all around the world, right? We have global clients. And it never really comes up where there's any kind of like weird situations like How that. How would you know? Well, like there's one guy in a call. The only one that comes to mind really is there's a guy that was a virgin, and he like asked a question during one of the calls. He's like, "Is it okay if I bring like a gun on a date?" And we just kicked him out of the program. Right? Yeah. We're like, "No, that's not cool." He, I don't think he wanted to inflict harm, but he just carries a gun and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know. So, but again, it, it's it's not teaching them how to manipulate girls in any way. But it is. How so? I mean, you're you're using something that has worked. I think psychologically on women repeatedly, right? So you're giving that to somebody who might not come up with that himself. It's not of true character. But everyone, the thing is everybody has a system, right? Like guys all have something they want to say, a way they want to text, et cetera. I'm just giving them better ways to handle a lot of those objections. What you would you equate, equate what you do to other careers? Meaning, all right, so you're a dating, a men's dating coach. Yeah. Cool. There's men's fitness instructors. There's sales instructors. Uh, there's all types of different types of men that coach men for improvement. W what metaphor would you use that's analogous to like what you do for men picking up chicks? Like, is there, I do what like Steve Kerr did to Steph Curry and coached him how to be a better player. Yeah. W what do you say a about lot of that? It, so a lot of the guys that come to me, they're lacking confidence. So like, you know, a lot of guys don't believe themselves. So mm. they, they're handicapping themselves actively. They think that they're too short or they're ethnic. They think that's a disadvantage or they're too old or they're not in good enough shape, or their hairline's receding, and they focus on those things, and either stops them from talking to girls at all, mm -hmm. or they go in and they just assume they're gonna get rejected, which becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I always mm -hmm. say on my channel, like if a guy is carrying himself, like, like the analogy of like a used car salesman or something like that, if you came in and he's like, do you want this piece of shit over here that's like all rusted with the parts broken out in the windows? That's how guys are presenting themselves. Mm. Whereas if they have confidence in what they bring to the table and see themselves on the same level as the girl, yeah. that changes how, they, how their body language is, how they interact. It comes through in, in the way they're carrying themselves. And that's a lot of the battle right there. But they also have to know how to move things forward. Because mm -hmm. after guys go and talk to the girl, they don't know how to direct it towards getting the phone number and setting up a date and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So, no, I understand there's a system a, to this. Go ahead, not, Rebecca. I don't think there's a problem with that. Yeah. I think that if you're empowering men to go on dates, especially because, listen, it's hard out there for a guy like I've, I mean, I, I run my own channel too. I know that it's hard. And so empowering men to, you know, say, hey, like I'm not a piece of crap. I can go on dates. I can like get with girls or whatever. I, I, think, I think to your point, you're just saying, where's the line there for women and their safety? But I think as well, women have to take ownership in that yes. as well. Like as a woman, I need, like I have my guards up as far as like, I'm going outside. It's not gonna be at 10 o'clock at night or 11 mm -hmm. o'clock at night. I know for myself, that's why I tell women too. I'm like, if you put yourself in bad situations, it's not completely your fault, but you played a part in there. You ended up there as right. well. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. So it's like- but In his script, literally, you're gaslighting them. What, you're scared? Bring pepper spray if you're so scared. So then the next guy she goes on a date with who says something similar, you know, she's already accustomed. Oh, well, this guy wasn't so bad. I guess I can go to the... I just don't like you pushing women to come and meet you for the first time in a place where they have zero, zero control. That guy locks the door, you're 
You but yeah, but you chose to go there I, though. Exactly. You chose to go As into a, woman, a man's though, space. Chose, exactly. Like I wouldn't. I I've I never been never to a man's place. Situation. Like never. If a guy invited me to his place, I would never personally go. If I was to do that, I would say, you come to my place. But as a woman, you go into someone else's place, woman, man, cat, dog, whatever it is, you are by default, you are like, the chance you are, of you being in trouble yes. is higher yeah, because and, of that. And just, beca- and just because it didn't happen once, you should not, if you know better, right? Like that's, the women that go on those types of dates, cool, whatever, do you, right? right? But if you're the woman that says, I'm not gonna do that, that's not my character, that's not my value set, like I don't value myself like that, Mm -hmm. cool, he knows that that's not the woman that he's gonna be with. That he's not gonna get to sleep with. Mm -hmm. Exactly, but that's also the woman that's not gonna put herself in that situation. I, I talk to women all the time. If you wear something that is so revealing and you're walking outside at three o'clock in the morning on in New York City, in Miami, you don't think that there, that's a problem. You're a walking billboard. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't have, I don't feel bad for women like that because you are calling attention to yourself. I lived in New York. I literally would put a jacket on if I was coming from the bar or somewhere else because I don't want people to look at me. You don't want the attention. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But there are there are women that they go out to seek that attention. Mm-hmm. Mm. And so you have to you have like, you have to call for what it is. Are some ba- are some men bad? Yes. Are there some women that are bad? Yes. There are bad fish in the sea. And right. you're playing you're playing the odds at that point. Right. Is part of your lessons like going after women who are vulnerable or insecure? No, not at all. And okay. I think, and also too, like the, I guess like the game or how, like in the space, yeah. they talk about, oh, you should like put women down and stuff like that. No, I never said that either. And I, and I actually agree to that because I think that you speaking against that is a good thing. No, I, yeah, I call out all the guys that say treat girls bad or that say like women are below me. I never say anything like that. And I mm-hmm. defend, yeah. I defend girls in that regard. Yeah. I, by the way, I think that's very important. I'm a dude. You're a dude. We got dudes here. Mm-hmm. 99% of dudes are just dudes. They're not murderers. They're not yeah. rapers. They're not trying to kill you. Like let's this whole toxic masculinity thing is I think a little inflated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're basing how 99% of men are perceived because there's some bad apples. Well, that, yeah. Same thing with cops. Yeah. Same thing with NFL players. Everyone, Everyone kind of gets a bad rap for the one percent. Mm-hmm. What I also say is this: you know, you're a comedian, so you understand the Louis C.K. thing. He's like, the fact that women even go out with men at this point <laughs> is insane to me. Yeah. Because the number one cause of women's harm by is far men. <laughs> is men. So like, funny. Yeah, but funny. so like there there are some bad apples out there, but at the same time, every man has to look in the mirror and take personal accountability. So do women. Yes. Yeah. You're showing up at a random dude's house because he texts you a few times. Like yeah. you meet in public. There's things you can do for a woman. And by the way, like I get along with women. I'm friends with women. I date women. All that. If a chick was like, hey, listen, you're a great guy. That's awesome. I don't feel comfortable showing up to your house. Let's meet at such and such and such a place. Cool. I'm not going to be like, yo, bitch, let's go. What's wrong? Like, no, that's totally normal. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I I tell my clients, I say public dates are no problem. I was doing public dates for many, many years. I didn't start setting straight to the house till like four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. it's not, you know, it's not a pushy thing, right? If they still say, no, let's meet in public. I still say, then you have the option to go meet in public. And I think you should. But it's just that a lot, a whole bunch of them will still come straight to the house, you know, off the bat. That's on women. That's on women need to like raise their standards. How many times have women, like, people leave the bar together? That's the same thing, in my opinion. It's like, you chose to go home with that person. I'm not saying that it's their fault 100%, but you played a part in that as well. And I I don't know. I think as a woman, you have to keep that... But it's in everything. It's even how you dress on the date. Exactly. It's, you know, the decisions you make on the date, the conversations you have on the date. Like, all those things also lead you in a direction of, like, what your outcome is going to be. So, I mean, as a woman, obviously, you have to be, you know, wary that there are some good and bad people in the world, but you also have to be, you know, smart about your own safety. You mm. know, don't put yourself in a position where it's like, he could probably kill me, but I'm gonna go because I like him and it's fun time and it's three o'clock in the morning. Like that's yeah. something. To By the also way, some women are into that concept. That. Just so you know. Uh, next question, as far as like dangerous type dudes. Yeah. Chicks like the bad boy guy. Yeah. There's one thing that's a repellent to women is like overly nice guys. Yeah. Would you yeah. agree? I can't. Really overly yeah. nice. Yeah. I yeah. can't yeah. make another. <laughs> anyway, we'll touch on that. I can't make let, another. Let me get back to something you said. So, uh, we talked about confidence, men's confidence. We did a whole episode on 
men need to step up their confidence. We talked about what women are looking for in a man, ambition, wealth, look, status, all that. Confidence is at the top of pretty much every girl's list, mm -hmm. okay? So there's no secret that also, if you look at all the, the, the numbers on these dating apps, or even in real life, the top 20% of men are getting 80% of the women. Like the rich are getting richer, K-shaped economy, whereas you have the bottom third of men, under 30, have had, I've sex had in zero year. sex yeah. in the last year. No game, no chicks. So a lot of men are struggling. Not you, brother. You've loudly, proudly said that you've slept up with over 1,500 women. 1509, I think, to be exact. 1590. 1590. 1591. We're Get coming right. for you, girl. I know. <laughs> so what's been, is it confidence? What's been your secret to success? And what, me, what do men need to know about all right, I've gotten laid zero times this year. I got to get to one. Well, so you're I trying at, to get to 1591, yeah, no, but there's so an underlying at, factor. You said that you know you were in sales or you still are in sales, yeah. right? And so I look at this kind of like a funnel. And don't, mm. I have two sisters, right? I'm, I'm not trying to objectify women and describe me this way. I tell guys to be authentic and get to know them on their own. I don't tell them to put up any like you know alter person or anything like that. But I look at it like a process where you have at the top, you have basically like your Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, bars and clubs and then meeting girls in the daytime, right? So cold approach and online. Then that leads to phone numbers, and then it comes down to your texting skill and how many of those phone numbers turn into dates, and then that comes into how well, like I have certain sequences I send the night before and the day of to confirm the date, just because people forget, mm -hmm. just to maximize the show up rate, minimize flake rate, et cetera. Same, same way you would remind a prospect for a sales yeah. call. Yeah. This is literally yeah. And, yeah. Then, like, and then from there. By the way, if you need a job, my, yeah. my company's hiring. You just take what you're doing no, with checks. You bring up the financial consultant, done. I tried to order a sales. I tried to order a sales for one summer just to see how it would relate to game because my friends were saying there's a lot of parallels. Same stuff. And I, I worked for the Vivint Smart Home Company for one summer, broke the record as like the top rookie out of like 2,000 people people and I never been trained in sales and I took the day that I broke the record I took like two hours off to go hang out with the chick too so, <laughs> building Boom, a take that sales team <laughs> and I'm begging chicks in the middle of the day <laughs> <laughs> but basically like so it's your texting skill and then it's how well you run the date when I talk about running the date a lot of guys are the biggest mistakes they're making are they're running out of stuff to say they're talking about stuff that's too boring they're not setting up for the girl to come back home with them Right? They just let the date go on forever and the girl eventually excuses herself mm -hmm. or they don't know how to answer objections for her to come home, right? Like to resolve any kind of like safety concerns or, any, or they come of various forms. But a lot of guys think if a girl says like, oh, I'm not sure if I should come back with you, that means like never, she's, like she's totally not interested. Or if they tell them that at the bar or club, they have identified like 14 major reasons that they won't come home from a bar or club. It's usually they don't wanna leave their friends, they gotta be up early or you know, there's a whole certain number of ones. But most guys think when they hear that, that means the girl's not interested. That's mm -hmm. not the case. It's just she needs to feel comfortable and safe and all that stuff. And just like she said, like, yeah. they, girls are very good at reading people, right? They're like, they're, they have like 10 times more white matter than a, than a male, which is responsible for verbal and, and social connections. So they can read, even an 18 year old girl has way b better social acuity than me, even though I've been, you know, meeting thousands of people, yeah. just based on how her brain's wired. So they're a pretty good judge of whether or not that guy's, you know, who he's representing himself to Let be. Let me ask the ladies, like, the script that he's saying, by the way, it works great in sales, but mm -hmm. you can tell, like if a rookie salesman is like, hi, yes. John, mm -hmm. yeah. I am here to sell you yeah. a product. They call that congruence. <laughs> okay, incongruence. so when, when as, a, as, a, uh, as women, I know Rebecca, you've been out of the game, but you know, you used to be a hot stuff. Can you tell <laughs> so when a guy is using a script like, hey, would you like to come back to my place? Versus like, how you doing, girl? And I like, you can tell what's more natural. Can, can you read if it's like a script, fake, apps, not yeah. vibe? Yeah. What's your experience with apps. that? On the apps. Yeah, on the apps, it's like you know they're sending out the same thing to at least. Copy, paste. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like what they're saying. Yeah, like, yeah, how's your day? DMs. But once it gets to text, I don't find. I'm saying in real life. Oh. My husband picked me up. It was all game. Ooh, wee. <laughs> go ahead, James. James. Yeah. James came with the smoke, and I was. In what did James do? He was just. I don't even know. He just swept me off of my feet. He was just, Boom. he was attentive. He was just listening to what I had to say. He was more, he was more interested in what I was saying. I know that he didn't remember anything that I said that day. Okay. <laughs> like I know, but he wanted to, he wanted to get it. But he, he was, did. he was spitting game though. Yeah. Like he so, was just, he, my, my husband has Harlem game. Mm. What's he's, that all about? He's from he's from New York. Okay. Oh. So you hey got, yo that ma, how you doing? <laughs> hey I know what you're talking about. Yeah, he has that like. You fell for swag. that Harlem yeah. Globetrotter yeah. game. Got you. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was wondering awesome. what is more of a red flag, and I'm curious to what you tell uh, guys because I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, is it more of a red flag that a guy only talks about himself, 
or doesn't say anything about himself because I found a few times where like by the end of the date he slips out oh yeah I'm married and I'm like what? <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, no wonder you weren't talking about yourself. By the way, no. that's a bit. You should work on that. That's, that's a great yeah, bit. <laughs> I think it's a worse red flag. This is me, vice to men out there. If you don't ask women questions, just talk about yourself. Yeah. I for think sure. that's like the worst, dumbest thing. If you're like, hi, so this is what I do for work, and this is what yeah. I do for fun. And like, I hear women yeah. complain about this all the time. It's like, it's just this idiot that I would totally hook up with if he would just shut the, the fuck up <laughs> and ask me a question. But no, he wants to tell me about his, his company story, and his goals. what seed goals. round he's in yes. and my goals. It's like, <laughs> homie, I don't know what you're saying. Pay for the date, I gotta go. That's you know, my advice to guys out there. That's Am I right? New York right there. Okay. Yes. Where that's coming from is they're trying to like win her over. I tell yes. guys to come in assuming it's already like a done deal, assuming you've already been dating this girl. That allows them to be comfortable and that's just like tip. interact authentically, right? Because most guys come on, they're like, how do I be the impressive guy? How do I be the funny guy? How do I be the clever guy? They're like, how am I doing so far? Yeah. I've, I've made it five minutes. Let me try to make it 10 minutes. You know, how am I doing? How like They're looking at like a point system. It's almost like you want to be a guy. You kind of want to sit back at your date and you want to be like, look, I've made it. Life's good. I'm successful. Here we go. Tell me about yourself. Tell me why I should spend my time with you. I'm dating 10 other different girls. Or in John's case, 15 fucking thousand of them. <laughs> but tell so, Help me help you. Show me the money. <laughs> I, think like, I feel like that type of confidence, like even if you're a broke boy, will go a long way. I'm here. I'm good. I could be anywhere in the world, but I'm here with you right now. Talk to me. Tell me about yourself. What are your goals? What are your life? What are your ambitions? Sell me on why I should hook up with you. You take that approach with late women are gonna respond to that. I think that's how you know. my husband <laughs> Bang, that's that Harlem game right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. James, James laying it down. Yeah, he's a, yeah maybe I don't he know. Should be a coach. It is nice when they ask. I don't like talking about myself for too long, and I'm, I'm de genuinely interested in about them too, because I know about myself, and we're on a date, so I know we're vetting each other, kind of. Yeah. So if I go on for too long, I, I catch myself, and then I'm like, okay, so same question, back at you. But that's fine. I'd rather a girl tell me, all right, cool, I've just been talking way too much, yeah. I want to get to know you more, versus like, Okay, is this guy having a shut up? And then he feels the need. What? What's wrong? Is there so? Uh, did I not say anything? Oh, and like yeah. now, there's that whole like awkward. Wait, can I tell you? The girl's one like thing. nothing. If a girl says nothing's wrong, believe me, <laughs> something's wrong. Or I'm Wait, fine. this is the best. I'm line. fine. I'm, nothing's wrong. Yeah. I went something. on a guy. I went on a date with a guy, and for 45 minutes, I I watched on my watch. He yeah. did not stop talking. 45 minutes, and then he went, enough about me. What about you? What do you, th <laughs> what do you think about me? Oh Jesus! You've been Literally on some dates, said, Amber. What do you think about me? Wow. What did you? What do you think about that? Oh, I think that's stupid. <laughs> I, I tell, I tell, because because everybody's trying to like show off. Yeah. And it all comes. It has the reverse effect. Mm -hmm. If a guy's like, "Hey, I have this. I have this. I have this," the girl's like, "Okay, you're trying to. You're mm -hmm. placing me up here. You're trying to do all this stuff to win me over." Yeah. Versus a guy that just comes on. The confidence comes from being assured that, that they're gonna like you no matter what. Mm -hmm. So that gives you permission to be yourself. So it's, it's actually a positive message. It's not a manipulative message. But most guys are doing it wrong because they're coming in trying to use lines and trying to get something. Yes. And, and they're trying mm -hmm. to you know, yeah. make the girl like them and win her over. But this concept of using lines, spitting game, you know, it's no secret they say that you know, men fall in love with their eyes. Women are beauty objects. Whereas women fall in love with their ears. What, sell me a dream. What are you up to? Mm -hmm. What do you got going on? So for a man, the words that you say carry a lot of weight. Yeah. Whereas a woman, how you look carries a lot of weight. But it's what we're encouraging men, don't talk, ask, how you doing? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? What's your experience with like the things you should or you shouldn't say? Because it's time for you to talk, it's time for you to ask. How can you make a woman fall in love with her ears? So I tell them like, I remember back when I read one of the first Pickup Artist books, right? Like, I don't, have you guys heard of Mystery? The guy that wears like the yeah. top hats and all that stuff? He used to have the show on VH1 yeah. and all that, yeah. So like, he, said, like, he says that exact same thing. He says this is rooted in evolutionary biology. And he says that men are, are primarily attracted to a woman's physical attractiveness, mm -hmm. whereas women are attracted to survival and replication value. So they're looking at, is this guy a leader of men, protector of loved ones? Does he get other hot girls? Does he you know, own who he is? Does he have an adventurous life? This kind of stuff. So I tell guys to showcase what they have going on in their life without bragging about it that can set them apart from other guys, mm -hmm. right? But also to stack multiple conversational topics so they don't run out of things to say. That comes from mystery as well. So you're just like stacking all these different topics and you can bounce between topics and new topics come up all the time and that's how you never run out of things to say. Because most guys, they'll beat one conversational topic or thread into the ground 
and then they're like, uh, so, you know, and then there's like silences, and that can just really kill the vibe and make things weird for people. You know how people. they say, uh, don't brag, let others do it for you, mm -hmm. right? You, by the way, you this reminds me of a... You endlessly quote. It's What's that? You endlessly quote. This is what we do. He gets it. So don't brag, do, uh, let others do it for you. <laughs> Deli, by the way, you're, you're working right now. Pull up a picture of Don Rickles, Frank Sinatra. Just pull this up. You familiar with this story? No. Put it on the screen, take it off real quick when we tell the story. So don't brag, let others do it for you. So arguably the most famous, best musician ever, the world has ever seen is Frank Sinatra. Mm -hmm. Arguably, okay? So he ran with the Rat Pack crew, right? Dean Martin, um, Don Rickles, uh, his crew, Sammy Davis Jr., Peter, Peter uh, Lawford. And Don Rickles comes up to Frank Sinatra, old blue eyes, and he goes, hey, Frank, I'm on a date tonight. And uh, do me a favor. In the middle of dinner, come up to me and tell me, hey, Don, great to see you. You're the best. You know, make me look good. You're freaking Frank Sinatra. He goes, Don, I don't really want to do this. Frank, please, come on. I'm trying to impress the girl. All right, Don, you got it. Okay, so they're halfway through dinner, and Frank Sinatra, as he said he would, comes up to, hey, Don, great to see you. Don Rickle goes, Frank, don't you see him having dinner here? You're fucking bothering me. Get out of here. <laughs> Frank goes, oh, my God. That's Don Rickles' comedy. But don't sure. brag, let others do it for you. It's like one of those things where it's sort of an analogy there. There, I don't know what that was right there, but the, like, rather than him being like, hey, I know Frank Sinatra. I don't know if you know. That's a, kind of a big deal, right? I'm cool, right? He kind of employed his jokey mechanisms yeah. to... It's like a subtle so, edification. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Edification. And, al and also, not uh, I wouldn't say like taking girls on dates where people know you, but, you know, like, if, for instance, my, my husband was a part of this, um, this organization, and he invited me to come to like a basketball like fundraiser thing. And he was the person that was speaking at this event. And I was like, this mother effer. Yeah. <laughs> but it Harlem made, game. But yeah, it was that Harlem game. And he and he presented and I was like, Yeah. That's, that's my a, yeah, yeah. Like, um, that's my boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and what could have he have done differently that would have made you feel like he's trying too hard? Be like, oh, I'm gonna go speak at this thing, like, uh, I think it'd be cool if you come. Like so I don't know. I just the way he did it was just so subtle. He's like, "Hey, you want to come to this fundraiser? Like, I think it'll be fun. Like, you know, there's uh, gonna be games and stuff there. We can play basketball. Like, it was." I just, love this story about James Harlan game. Word to the men out there. Hmm. Let's say you're speaking at this event. You're the man. You're the keynote speaker. You're giving a speech. You're the guy. Rather than telling the girl, "Hey, by the way, I'm kind of a big deal. I'm speaking in this event. Yeah. I'd be honored if you came." Show. show. Just be like, "Hey, there's this little event. No big deal. Yeah. If you come, I'll get you a ticket. Just leave it at the box office. All good. Whatever, whatever." She shows up, and it's like the James show. Yeah. He's speaking. All of a sudden, she's like, "Wow, wow, wee, wow, wow." Yeah. yeah. Boom. And Harlan then the game. Jaw, and then the yeah. jaw hits the ground, and you're like, "All right." And yeah. then it's like, "Hey, I want to um, say hi to Rebecca. She's out here." I'm like. Oh, wait, I get a shout out too. <laughs> wow, yeah. you got a shout out during the speech? Yeah, and I'm Subtlety. Was like, yes. yes. Subtlety. Yes. There's nothing yes. sexier than seeing a man do, like do what he does. In best. his purpose. Really? Exactly. Yeah. In yeah. his element. Oh yeah. I love seeing guys do their thing. Yes. I love seeing John do his thing. Is there 1400, 1500 of doing his thing? I wish I could. I guess a lot of girls that. see you do your thing also. But I want to go back to your, to your original point yeah. though about, about so you said how does a guy like go from getting no results to getting more results? Yes. So after the date, right, there's a problem process back of the house after that how do you keep the girl mm. instead of it being like a cheap one night stand right and i basically like find where their bottlenecks are so like some guys suck at texting mm. right so even if they get a bunch of phone numbers it never turns into dates mm. some guys suck at dates so even though they can set up dates they never go anywhere mm. or some guys they can get the hookup but they don't know how to keep the girl around and so they can't keep They're girls bad at sex do you help them with yeah, that that's, too? no i do i do have a, a whole training on that we actually one of the virgins that i trained he had been trying for 10 years with other coaches. There's a guy from England. And from age 18 to 28, I'm still a virgin. He's like, after this, I'm giving up. I'm, I'm going to go like MGTOW, like never care about girls again. Oh my God. I'm like, I promise we'll do it on the first week. He's like, can you guarantee it? I'm like, no, but very high chance. And I walked through how we would do it. And he lost Virginia on day four. Huh? And then he ended up sleeping with eight girls across eight weeks. And on week five, he went out with a girl that was like really hot, right? The first really, really, really hot girl he's ever been out with. 
and he massively fucked it up. And I was like, you're not ready for that yet. <laughs> like, you didn't, know, you didn't even know what a vagina felt like five weeks ago, mm. right? But he, the reason why, why I thought of that story is I had like a half hour video about how to hit the G spot and all the major positions. And he did that. And the girl said like, wow, I didn't know people could be that good in bed. And that was his first time ever having sex. So that's a, a skill that you can learn as well, right? He's in the top 1% now of sex, just following the directions of how to do it. Most guys don't know, right? They're, what are they doing? They're watching porn, porn. and yeah. they're, they're getting it It's porn. funny how like the women are objecting to the sales <laughs> hacky approach, but the <laughs> pleasuring the woman, they, they're all like, Bravo, mother. <laughs> well, okay. yeah, all because right. if at the end of all of that, you get the girl, you you know, jackhammer her, you get off, and then you leave, I would not be happy with that. But if you're actually, because what you just said, which I didn't think before, ch a cheap one night stand, you actually want yeah. to have sex with them yeah. again. That's yeah. great. I'm I, I want to see like any girl that had good chemistry with. I want to see them as much as possible. You know, again. Yeah, I don't. I don't just like okay. I got a number now. They're gone. It's mm -hmm. not. Right. It's so not like good. That. And you yeah. have to teach them how to do stuff if they want to. If the girls yeah, want to do them again. That's how it is. So it's not necessarily a complicated process. But most people have compounding bottlenecks. So like, they don't even know how to have an interaction. And their pictures suck online. And it's a non-starter. And then if they get a number here, or there, their texting sucks and it's de it dies there. If they get a date out, they could screw that up. So there's, it, there's areas for it to fail all the way through. Mm -hmm. And I help them make the process smooth so they can get regular dates. So by week two or three of my training, they now have their schedule packed full of dates. And then they're like, you know, what should I do? I don't tell them what their goal should be. So if you, if you want a girlfriend, get a girlfriend. If you want to date around and, and see girls like on a rotation, do that. Mm -hmm. But usually what ends up happening with most, most clients is guys that had no options or very limited options get a bunch more and better quality options and then they find one they really connect with and, and make that a girlfriend. Quick thought, then we're going to go to Super Chats. Yes. Do you, ladies, gentlemen out there, do you see what men have to go through yes. just to get a chick in their life? No, it's crazy. Okay, it's so guys are going and, and, and it, signing up for classes. They're reading books. They're taking on mentors. They're virgins. They're going trying to get from zero to hero just to get your attention and maybe get laid. Like I don't know women. any women who are like, yep, I'm going to a pickup artist class this weekend. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Leslie over here, she bangs a ton of dudes. <laughs> so <laughs> she's helping us up. She's going to get my money right. She's getting my fitness right. She's getting my game well, right. This is funny and too. after all this, <laughs> dudes are going to be hollering. No, women don't have to deal with true. what men mm -hmm have to deal with yeah so you might look down at some of this stuff but what would you rather have this 40 year old virgin steve carell character that's like i got no money got no ass in my life and life sucks or this dude right now that all of a sudden is pleasing eight women a week bang so i'm just saying appreciate that these guys want women like you in their life respect to you dudes out there that's it with that being said, yes. how you doing? I'm doing good. You doing all right? I'm doing great. This is that Harlem game we talk about. <laughs> so You're good. Miami, my friend. Yeah. Okay, my, 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 my. So, so here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking right now. Me and you, mm -hmm. we read some super chats. Okay. Yeah. I'm done and you know what chat. I want you to do? Read them good. I want you to read them real good. <laughs> Uh, I'm uncomfortable. Adam. Yeah, I'm a <laughs> I'm feeling it over here. Oh, yeah. Woo! I want right. you to read them super chats. Let me read and by the chats. way, if you guys got questions, good, bad, ugly, different, let John know what you think about what he's saying. Are you like, yo, John's a man, he's killing it, thank you, buddy? Or it's like, he ain't shit, he ain't banging nobody. Let us know in the comments. We're going to be reading your comments. We're going to be reading your super chat. Nat hooked on phonics worked for me. She's killing it. <laughs> Go get them, girl. Show them what's up. Okay. You guys can take a water break. Water break. No bathroom breaks. Take a water break. we got about 45 minutes left, so yes. let's do this. All right. Well, first, thank you all for the super chats. We appreciate all of them. Make sure to like today's video and subscribe. Um, so we'll go through them quickly for you guys. Uh, we got Sebastian. He said Destiny is watching and wants to call in. We've got Bethune, Bethune Cookman, groundskeeper. Shout out to John, greatest teacher. Owen Cook. Uh, then we have uh, this one. Uh, John Anthony's thoughts on Richard Cooper and Rolla Tomasi. John Anthony is the king of roasting. Oh, we got to hear some roasting by you. Yeah, I've got about 150 videos where I attack other coaches in the space. Oh, wow. Okay, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> well, someone actually did say Rolla was in the chat. Uh, then we have uh, Thai City Uncut Underground. John Anthony, he dates a lot of. Uh, uh, LGB communities. 
uh, crypto <laughs> keeper. I make roughly 100K. I'm decent, 710 looking uh, guys, 30 years old. I have about a million dollars saved. How do I get a date with Amber? She's amazing. I live in Seattle, though she can vet me all she wants. Uh, I have proof. All right, there you go. Here's what you do. You follow Amber Joy Lane on Instagram. Daddy. She's killing it. She was the voice you slide in the DM. <laughs> And you never know what happens. Just make sure that we get a 10% referral fee. Amber. <laughs> yes, yeah. I agree. By the way, if you're interested <laughs> in Natalia's bath water, we are all selling them. It's uh, three jars. Three jars for $100. No, my there's price is not high. There's bubble bath higher. flavor. There's bubble gum flavor. <laughs> and there's some other weird flavor. I don't know. Inappropriate. Back to Super Chats. Inappropriate. Inappropriate. Back to Super Chats. Okay, Adam. uh, This one is from uh, Baby Giga Chad. Adam, check out the Jeffrey Show. Great show ever. Uh, Then we have Larry Tran. This guy is the number one. He trashed Rolo and Freshnet playing with fire and other influencers. I guarantee you he'll call everyone uh, on the loser a panel if you disagree with him And once he gets home. Then we have Freedom Front uh, Money. Thanks, Adam and panel guest. As a fellow YouTuber creator, I say men should focus on money and their development, fitness skills, etc. Picking up chicks is very low priority. What do you think? Freedom Fund Money. Uh, then we have electric relax, reli- relaxation. Sleeping with the thousands of women will never be fulfilling. Uh, you are telling me that a uh, guy has been with more than women than Wilt Chamberlain and Magic Johnson. Then we have uh, Umpire Max. What percentage of John's lay count trans and night ladies have been exposed many times? I'm not sure of that one. Um, and those are all the chats we have uh, for our okay. guests today. All right. Oh, wait, we've rest. got one more? No, that's it. Okay. All right, we'll do super chats at the end. we got about yes. uh, I don't know, a little over a half hour left, and I want to get some good juicy stuff out of our friend juicy. John and our other friends. John, let's do some basic math here. Ooh. Let's get to know you a little bit further. So you're about to be 40. Yeah, in October. Okay, in yeah. October. So uh, 39, and your, uh, your body count number is 1590. 90. Yeah. 1591. You could be the special one. Leave a comment if you'd like to get banged <laughs> out by John. <laughs> Um, <laughs> do some basic math for me. How old were so, you when you lost your virginity? So, yeah. Give me mm. some numbers of like how you've gotten to this number and how you've kept tabs. And do you have a new this. goal? No, we uh, don't need to establish We'll get to the goals in I a ta- sec. Go I ahead. tattooed here. These are 500, Roman numeral 500s, right? And I've got the, I uh, hope they can do a close up there. Uh. So it's basically, this resembles the features of my, my Brazilian wife here. Oh. But each of the Ds is a 500. So I wanted to like symbolize it somehow in a tattoo. The D's? Um, my sister stopped talking to me after I showed this. But Wow. What does the D stand for? 500 each. In okay. Roman I thought it was like 500, 500 dick down D. <laughs> I don't, sorry about that. No, it's a Roman, Roman numeral. My so, bad guy. So I, I lost my virginity end of freshman year of college. I didn't even kiss a girl until college. But I lost my virginity end of freshman year of college. Went into third year of college, uh, having been with three girls. Graduated college, having been with 17. That was in 2005. 2012 was the first 100. At the end of 2018, I had 1,000. It started to become, once I, I got really into the game in like uh, 2012, right? So that's when yeah. things started to really so take off. So by 2012, you were a hit 100. Yeah. That's easy to keep track of. I mean, yeah. it's somewhat. It was 300 but May, then from May 2014. Pre-dating apps. 20, what's pre-dating that? apps. Oh, yeah. Pre-dating apps. Got to respect yeah. that. And that's the other thing is that like the first 400 girls were mostly from bars and clubs. So 2012 to 2018, you went from 100 to 1,000. That's 900 women. Yeah. Tinder, Calculator Tinder real quick. Yeah, what's right? 900 yeah. divided by 6? 900 divided by 6, 150. So that's 150 a year. It was like, I, I so know, that's every yeah. other day or so, jackpot. Yeah. I posted like 300 girls around Instagram, right, with faces blocked out just to show people. Like I have like a whole video of like, oh, pro- I saw like, that. like proving. Like you posted their pictures? Without with their, their face. With their face blocked out, it's yeah. like a big wow. white circle, but you just see like he's but their like body. with the girl. Yeah. Not naked. Did anybody get pissed about that? No. Okay. But so, no, no. So like, like I have a whole video like that's over an hour long, showing all the proof that I have. Like, here, here's where I'm at with this. Yeah. Hundred, thousand, fifteen hundred. You've gotten a lot of women in your life. What I think is more impressive isn't so much the number. It's like now you are helping other men get number one, number two, number yeah. five, number ten. <laughs> that to me is good. Like you're giving back. Mm-hmm. That, I think that's good. <laughs> He's not taking it all for himself. No, exactly. No, I agree with that. So, you know, 
we kind of alluded to this. It's like, what's the end goal? Like, there's no Hall of Fame leader's bulletin. It's like, John, you're in third place right now. This guy in Harlem the out World there. Record. This <laughs> guy in Harlem named James. He's at 2,000. <laughs> <laughs> different <laughs> James. Different James. So we, we tried. Talk about big game James Worthy. Magic Johnson. So, like, what's the end goal? It's like, 2,000, I'm retiring. This dick's going on a mantle. It's not going anywhere. Ladies, you get the ball. You see what I'm saying here? So we, it's like, we tried it. what's the goal? We tried. So, like, um... I was like curious to try living with multiple girls, or like Hugh Hefner was doing. And so in 2021, we had like three girls move into a two-story penthouse in Florianópolis, Brazil. And that was like a full-on nightmare. It, there was cool parts, right? Because you, you have like threesomes, foursomes, fivesomes. Yeah. And we would bring girls home from the clubs. We had a stripper pole. Sometimes there would be like 10 naked girls running around. And I'd be the only guy in the group, right? But there was this drama every day. People telling secrets, people gossiping, right. mm -hmm. you know, people, you know, for, like forming who's favorite. And, all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it was a cool experience, but it was too hard. And the, and the main girl that I like the most, the one that I'm married to now, she ended up moving out because she couldn't handle it anymore. Mm -hmm. And after like a week after she moved out and I was with the other girls and, and I was like, I don't even, you know, I'm not in love with these girls, I'm in love with her. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I kicked the girls out and moved her back in and we made a rule like no more girls living with us. For, oh, you know. Living with you. Yes. Okay. So now I have a second place. So your a girl. A second place for the other girls. Yeah. <laughs> that you take. Yeah. So. Not that you love not your girl, great. your wife. Yeah. Are you in love with her? Yeah. And I assume there was a discussion. Hey, listen, this is my lifestyle. Yep. John Anthony lifestyle, to be exact. <laughs> Here's what I'm looking for. Now, for me, dating, having fun, this girl, that girl, all good, all great, you know. But if there's one girl you love and you marry her, you're going to value her opinion more than anything. Yeah. And if she said, look, John, or look at him, you know, I know we had this going on, I, I, but like I'm in love with you, you're in love with me. I kind of just want to be exclusive at this point, especially if we're going to go to that next phase of our life, family, kids. So like, if your girl came to you with that pitch, how receptive would you be to that? Or this is your, your this is ingrained in your DNA. I'm banging my way to the top. So, we, <laughs> so we had those talks in the earlier days, right? In the beginning, like she didn't know there were other girls at first before we were in a relationship, she, she thought it was just us dating. And then she basically came over one day a little early when I was living in a different place before we were living together. And there was like a girl there. Mm. <clears throat> so we had like a big fight. Mm. I told her about my work, my job, what I'm doing and, and all that stuff. And it was hard. It was hard. It was a lot of growing pains, a lot of, you know, it was really hard on her, admittedly. It caused a lot of problems in the earlier days, but she knew it was like part of my lifestyle and part of, you know, who I am and what I, what I want to be doing. And She's also bisexual, right? So we had lots of threesomes as well. That's how it goes down, guys. And we can, oh. you know, we can go out to the club. And she's really pretty. She's really, um, she's really smart too. She's, she's the girl in all your videos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now she's, she's part of the business. She's here in town too. Right? She was okay. like, should I come? But I didn't know if she could, Aww. if she was able to come on. Could I had her right here. And here's this girl's a childhood star on a Brazilian. Person. <laughs> this girl's Brazilian. So, but what happened was, so she came home. She came to your place early one day. Yeah. This has old school vibes written all over it. Remember that scene? It's like next thing you know, you're in well, San Diego. Well, it's funny because you take the early flight, you come home, gang bang. Secur right there. Security, was like, security was like, no, you, you never saw old school. <laughs> Jesus, you got to get out. How far into that was was that that she didn't know what you did and she that didn't was only know like, that. that was only like one month. It was like. But there was yeah. a whole month that went by that she had no idea you were sleeping with other people. But we weren't boyfriend girlfriend yet. Psst. Yeah. So. So give me the pros <laughs> and cons of this lifestyle. Yeah. I assume the pros are a lot of fun, a lot of women, a lot of sex. That's great. Well, so, a lot so of cons, a lot of drama, STDs, Headaches. risk. I don't know. Give me, everything in finance is risk reward. Everything in investments is yeah. risk reward, Sheesh. right? Yeah. So, so give me the pros, the cons, the risk reward of this yeah. type of lifestyle. So if, you, if you're just going like strict hardcore player lifestyle and you're not getting a connection with the girls, I think that's ultimately empty, right? Even though I've been with a lot of girls, I always would develop connections with them and want to see them much more. And you know, you have like a relationship with them on some level, right? And if you're just a monogamous relationship, that can feel too restrictive. I've tried that a bunch of times, and that just feels too restrictive to me because it's, I still want to be able to flirt with people. I still want to be able to talk to people. I don't want to be like, you know, breaking another person's trust or doing something I'm not supposed to be doing. And it's not even natural. Like, if you look into, I read a lot of neuroscience books, a lot of evolutionary psychology books, and monogamy mostly was pushed by like the church and the state. And it's not even a natural thing. And they found that humans are meant to have like one main partner bunch, and a bunch of side partners, which is exactly what I'm doing. But not letting your wife do. Yeah, but traditionally, um, most females would be monogamous or have very limited partners in societies mm -hmm. as well for going back way in time. Now, if your wife did, you know, step out of, of your relationship and did pursue that route, would you leave her? Yes. 
Yes. And she knows that. Okay. Even now, if it's a woman? Because you said she's No, women's are fine. Oh, um, but a woman we, without you. Usually if it's a girl, we're, we're with the girls together. But there's been a couple of times where she's like, I really like this girl. Is it cool if I go to this girl? I'm like, yeah, it's fine. And that's cool. Yeah. But if it's only if it's a guy, then it's no. out. Boot. No. What about yeah. like another why? couple? Can I explain why? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't. I don't see like a female as like a, a threat or like I don't know. I don't want any. No, the girl thing I get. Why? Yeah. Why you are opposed to her having any kind of outside relationship? Why well, don't I want her to see guys? She, you're pregnant. <laughs> no, it's not because of that. I, I just. I don't know. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't feel good about that on any level. If some guy was banging my chick, I don't know. I wouldn't feel good about that. But you cannot apply that same logic in the reverse. I, like she just told, had to get over it. I told her I know it's a double standard and you're not you don't have to stay with me. Right. Yeah, that's and so fine. she accepted it. And that. it hurt her, but she got over it because I just wonder what happens when she's pregnant or she can't have sex for a while when she's nursing and all those things. Do you think you'll slow down at all? Respect yeah, I mean that? we have, we have three dogs, right? Dogs now, are not the same as changing no, no. your whole yes. body. No, I understand. But before like we didn't have any dogs, right? Now that we have dogs, it's like I spend a lot more time now with the business because with like the, the dogs are there. No, oh. <laughs> but no, it's just more of like, it's like a whole family environment now, right? And we've been together longer, right? So I, I know, I've but I'm literally asking about something yeah. happens to a woman when she is a portal for life and our bodies change and they're going to feel extra insecure. Maybe she's okay right now, but what happens to us as we transform is uh, it's going to be very hard for her to be sitting there with a, a baby eating away at her tit and then you're like bye i'm gonna go to my other house and have sex because you are emotional right now no i mean we've had even without us having any kids like i've had a vasectomy by the way since 2014 right because i had you had a vasectomy since since, since 2014 so you don't want kids you can reverse that it's reversible yeah it's reversible i think that's the smartest thing i think all men should get vasectomies don't give me no it's no way there's a lot of misunderstandings most people think it's a permanent thing but the the doctor was like i can reverse this any time but if you freeze sperm you never need to reverse it and your sperm is more vital when you're younger more healthy. Wait, you froze your sperm? Yeah. Oh, see, that's smart. And yeah, you, it's also reversible. But I'm not, I don't need to do the reversal I've if I want to. I've never kids. heard of dudes freezing their sperm. Me women these days yeah. freezing their eggs galore. It's cheap, too, for the guys. Of course. But it's really? more expensive, of course. It's more expensive <laughs> to <laughs> reverse the vasectomy. Yeah, it's, it's like 8,000 like bucks 10, to reverse yeah, 10, the vasectomy. But to freeze sperm, it's like four, like four or 500 bucks a year. Because you just wow. pay for maintenance. Okay, so right, it's eight thousand dollars to reverse the vasectomy. You won't have problems with getting girls pregnant. Correct. Obviously, that's yeah. why yeah. you well, did that, it. Well, listen. Yeah, there, that it, makes sense. Here's finance at its finest. Yes. Okay. Pros and cons. You <laughs> know, risk pregnant. reward. A kid, you know, from zero to eighteen. You know how much it costs to raise a kid these days? By the way, it's a million bucks or something. Like eighteen that. years. Two hundred and fifty thousand. Eighteen years. <laughs> eighteen years. And on the eighteenth birthday, your father was it? After college. But for eight grand. You know, that's a $242,000 savings only here on the Sawscast. Don't even ask <laughs> twice. But that's something no, no, to consider. The, no, I've never even reversal. thought of that. It's eight grand for the reversal. To get the vasectomy, it's under a thousand bucks. No, it's a couple hundred dollars. Okay. And then, yeah. And it's 15, Point is, it's you're, 15 you're, minutes. you're plus 240 grand. There's no, give I, or take. I tell my channel that anybody that's sexually active should get a vasectomy because condoms can fall off, they can break. And girls can lie about and being And girls pill. lie about their birth control. I, yeah. It blows oh, wow. my mind that how many guys try and have sex with you without knowing what your birth control thing is. Because you can ruin their life yeah. easily. I don't know. Right. All, ta- yeah, all it takes is one time, too. I have lots of friends that, like, you know, the condom came off, the girl took the pill wrong, and then they, ha- they get... Even if one with of them an IUD. Abortion, guys, I gotta yeah. get out of here. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, you're making me But nervous. I really... <laughs> look at how okay. much birth control and how, how much we have to change our own chemistry as women in order to have sex comfortably yeah. and safely and they just can do a vasectomy well let's let's settle this once and for all we have this body count debate it's on every show you know men and women are different you've slept with 1590 women to be exact <laughs> you one of you girls play your cards right it's 1591 boom it's 20 minutes here's the deal <laughs> um if a woman said she slept with 1500 dudes if a woman said she slept slept in 150 I'm dudes sorry. She'd be disgusted, blasphemed, just run out of town. You, you built a business model on this. If that's not a case example, that I've never seen one better than this. So female body, body count versus male body count. Is there a clear, distinct difference in your mind? Yes, but, and it is a double standard, I agree. But it's like the way that like, society looks at it as well. right? Like If a guy does it, a lot of people are like, oh, that's kind of cool. But if a girl does it, a lot of people can look at that negatively. I don't judge personally, mm-hmm. but I don't want to get involved with a girl that sleeps around with a lot of people. 
be honest. Yeah. So what would be for no, someone who slept funny. with fifteen hundred and ninety women, to be an exact? I don't know about you. I heard it was four. I heard it was like fourteen hundred, bro. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, 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 I've, always, I've always made it. A re- I've always made it a really big deal because it's. I think that's the only credibility that, and it's not about like a contest. Do you like ring a bell every no. time? <laughs> <laughs> we, we made time another sale today. <laughs> ding 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 ding. Do you get? But, do you but give my them question is. I send a text out to my friends. That what? Really? Hey, got another one. Yeah. Jackpot. What? I would hate for to be someone that has slept with, <laughs> for someone that has slept with as many women as you. That's hilarious. 1500 plus. And that's just sex. I didn't count like if it was just a blowjob or handjob, I didn't count that. Oh, we're not even counting handies at this point. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, we're at 2000 plus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's like five grand. <laughs> we're having fun here, guys. Like and subscribe if you want to see more handies. Um, but for someone that had slept with 1500 <laughs> women plus, oh. For a woman, what body count would she have to tell you that you would be disgusted by? Mm. Um, I'm not talking about a porn star. I'm not talking yeah. about someone like sex work. I'm talking a regular girl. For, if, she, if you said, hey, here's my number. Show me your number. What number is like, nah, that is a red line for me. What's the number? For me personally, it's like anything over like 20. Wow. So there it is. But most girls are below that, to be honest. Like I know lots of girls that hit nine and they they keep sleeping with the same people because they don't want to conceptually go to double digits. Yeah. Right. So. Do you see this? Di- wait, wait, wait. I have a question. Is it different in different countries? Because you said you've been with girls mm. in different countries, like oh, Brazil, War- uh, Poland, Ukraine. Uh, Love this ones. question. Yeah, go it's ahead. A great question. Portugal. Is it different in these places? Because I I think that a lot of women are more traditional in those types of countries. Yeah. No, I, I have that as kind of a general standard. But but in you yeah Ukraine was the prudest place to live by far. It takes like prudest? two. To, yeah. It takes okay. like two to five days. I lived there in 2017 before all the you know crazy war stuff there. Mm. But it takes like two to five dates. Almost no girl will come home with you from a club. Almost no girl will come home with you after a first mm. date. American I had situations where there. I'd be on a fourth date in public and they they weren't ready to kiss yet. That would happen mm. often. In Ukraine. Well, you, yeah, no, it's still keep going. You so that's Ukraine. To, yeah. So maybe they deserve to get invaded. They're, they're I don't more, like that kind of attitude, ladies. <laughs> <movies. They're more, laughs> it's a fifth date. We're still. I'm just, they're it's more a joke. On like a it's a joke. It's a joke. We're having fun Wait, here, guys. But we're invading you whether you <laughs> we're invading you. Do or not. Okay, so how about this? Let's hear John Anthony's, John Anthony lifestyle, top five places for the loosest women. Brazil. And top five places avoid if you want to get laid or cities. Mm. Would you do us that honor? Yeah, so top five. Top five. five. I mean, if we're talking about like, easy, so I purposely avoid anywhere that's like easy mode because then people will say, oh, you inflated your number. So I won't go to like Thailand or like Indonesia or Philippines. That was a question in the super okay. chat they yeah. were accusing him of. So top no, five I've never countries. never been to those places. Okay. Like, because there's some coaches that'll go and they'll, they'll be in Thailand. And they're like, oh, I've been with 300 girls, but it was all online and it was Thailand mm. and they're they white. So right? Thailand so, doesn't count? No, I've never been there. But like, well, I'm saying that. But yeah, no, but, but like if you're looking to just get laid easily, what I've heard is that Thailand, Indonesia, Philippines, those are. I went to Colombia. Southeast Asia. Colombia also is very easy. I went there. People think Brazil is easy, but it's not. You actually Brazil have to have game. Very traditional she's she's women. Brazilian. Tell, tell people because Tra- there's lots of dating coaches on YouTube that say, oh, Brazil's really easy. He's only getting laid because he went to Brazil. I was at 1,179 when I arrived in Brazil. So, like, most of the girls I've been with have been in America. But people say, oh, Brazil's just easy. But so you got Southeast Asia, you she's got Brazilian. Colombia. What do you say about Brazilian well, She's girls. defending Brazil. Yeah, Brazil, well, Brazilian women are more traditional in their, yeah. in their mindset. So they're thinking, well, I want a husband mm-hmm. at the end of this. Yeah. Got it. What about London? All right. The Brits, so Brazil, the conservative. Brits yeah, no, they London was nice. Where does USA yeah. rank in this, in this list? Are women e- tend to be easier in the United States? Because the whole, the whole argument is that Western societies, USA, Canada, I think the loosest women are in Scandinavia. Like they, they, they believe the most in feminism, Iceland. Mm. Is it your experience that more Western femini- femin- feminism, feminist, feminist countries feminist. tend to be looser than a little more well, conservative Eastern, countries? Eastern Europe, like in Poland and Ukraine, right? Most girls won't come straight to the house. So mm-hmm. that actually bothered me because it, it just takes a lot more time to yeah. go through the whole process. Mm. Because if a girl comes to the house and you talk a little bit and hook up, you can see another girl or do something else right after, right? Okay. But if you're doing, if you have to go do the public dates, because over there, if you invite a girl straight to the house, they think it's just an invitation to have sex. Got it. So I think only one girl came straight to the house in Ukraine. So those countries aside, let's get back to America and and, and the West. Yeah, America, I think, is, you know, put pretty middle of the road. It's not necessarily easy or hard, but like... As long, I, I probably wouldn't live in a country again where the girls won't come straight to the house on the first date, just, mm. just being honest. Just because it, you know, in those countries too, a lot of times they don't want to come home with you even after the first date. Gotcha. So, you know. So give me some countries. If, if a guy wants to get laid, where's he moving? 
basically, I, like those ones I mentioned, like Indonesia, Philippines, yeah. Colombia, Places Thailand. you've been, though. A place I've been? Um, Colombia. I, I was mm -hmm. there just for, like, a short trip. Um, the chicks were a lot easier, right? The problem in Colombia, though, if you go into a nightclub, it's like 90% hookers. So we're like, okay, fuck the nightclub. So we would just go on the apps, and before you meet any girl, we'd be like, wait, are you working? And you have to, like, screen out the hookers, because uh, there's so many hookers. Oh okay, so this begs my next question. So you hear about these passport bros getting out of the United States, getting out of uh, yeah. traditional Western societies. They're moving out to Thailand, Colombia. They're knocking up chicks from other, you know, less civilized societies. They're wifing these guys up. They're dating these women. What's your advice to dudes out there yearning to go to other countries to find women? What, what was fascinating for me is that, like, there's just a lot less obesity in like mm, Eastern Europe yeah. mm. and South America. So like that's like my biggest issue with, and I don't mean that offensively, no, but it is a real you know thing. a lot of guys don't want to date an obese girl. And so if you like in Poland and Ukraine, almost hardly anyone is obese at all. You don't mm -hmm. even see it. You can go months without even seeing someone overweight, mm -hmm. wow. which is yeah. like another planet. So when you go on Tinder, if everyone's in shape, then it's you know if you're at least you're looking at the physical initially, it's like which face do you like or you know stuff like that versus <laughs> like. Okay, this girl's too big. This girl's big. I don't know what what this is here. Okay, this one's too big. You know, so it's a lot of and the, and the, it's like a supply and demand thing. Going back to sales. Yeah. So, like, hot girls aren't like fronting and doing all this stuff in all these other countries because there's so many of them mm. that you know they don't they're not in short demand. Like when you like in the U.S., I think like a lot of the, like the really really hot girls, they're in such small supply. So a lot it teaches them to just be shittier because people will tolerate it. Mm. By shittier, you mean not go out with you or? No. No, yeah, just like, like put up an attitude. Like do you play even games. have a type? Physically or overall? Well, she's got to be a chick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The old hole in a heartbeat joke. No, I, I've kept the quality very high as well. I know, but is there anything that you look for in a girl? Yeah, I look for a lot of qualities. So, non physically, I want the girl to be smart, have, have a good heart, good moral system. Is that after the second time? Not be dramatic. We don't know them if it's an online date, no. right? You don't know them. I yeah. know, but you Gotta can. be willing to come over first date, cut you off. <laughs> Not as I mean, the, in the, just because yeah. for time saving, because I'm working on my business a lot now, mm. and I'm with my girlfriend. I don't, and we have a rule too. We made some rules like I'm not going to go on dates with other girls, right? I'm not no. going to have other girls sleep over. Um, what you're not going on dates with other girls? Not like in public. Anymore. He's just taking yeah. them to the house. Oh, that's a new rule. Yeah, because yeah. you know. Oh, okay, that's, that's interesting. Some, some respect. Listen, I might bang her, but I'm not buying her dinner. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a little respect here. He's taking them straight back to the crib. No, no? but I mean, as a, as a woman who's now mine. publicly right. your wife, right? Because she's part of the business as well. She's public. Mm -hmm. it, it's probably embarrassing for her to hear from friends. Yeah. Oh, I saw your guy out on a date. No, that's, with not, that's not what it's about. She just doesn't want there to be any kind of like big emotional connection with these other girls. I get that it. Makes sense. Yeah. Like women oh. will say, um, you know, I would, I'm, I'm o more okay with my guy cheating on me than like if he falls was in love take, I mean, yeah and it's taking reverse, her to dinner to date or buying her gifts it's reverse for guys and, yeah. it, and that has an evolutionary root as well so like the guy doesn't want his chick sleeping with other girls because then he might be raising someone else's kid uh, and the girl doesn't want or the girl doesn't want you to fall in love because then you might go and protect and provide for someone else in the, yeah. like you know in ancient does times does her so, family does her family know about all of this stuff yeah they do and they're okay with it because yeah. it's very because I'm mm, telling you, it's I treat, very, I treat her really well. Very, very family oriented in Brazil. No, yeah, I treat, I treat dinners. her very well. Her mom, her mom loves me. Her brother would hang out with us. Like sometimes if, if she would have to her travel. Her brother's for getting work. advice. Yeah, her brother's no, getting her, game. Her brother's. Hey, bro, I know you're being on my sister and all the other chicks out there, but what's up? What you got for me, bro? No, like, got you, homie. There'd be, there'd be some nights where we'd go out to the club with, like, yeah. you know, if she was traveling for work or something, I'd bring him out to a club and I'd have like ten girls, but they'd all be girls I was seeing. And then we'd come back, and they'd be on the stripper pole. I'd be going to the room with two or three of them, and he'd just be on the couch, like you know, like having a great time. But he knows I'm dating his sister, right? <laughs> By the way, my sisters, oh. I think, may come in single these days. If you want access, <laughs> you know, now you got to hang with me. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, we're joking here. All right, um, it's, a, it's a different type of whoop, it's a different type of lifestyle for sure. And, and she's taking a lot of flack from it from her friends, from her family, because they they all think it's a double standard, and yeah. they think, you know, well, you're do, you're being honest with these women. You're not lying at this right. point. Here's my question. So the Women hate cheaters. We all know that. There's, you know, women don't like cheaters. Yeah. But I think what they hate more than cheaters Lying. are liars. Yeah. yeah well that Just don't lie to me. Don't make me look stupid. Don't embarrass me. So how, women, women have emotions. We all have emotions. Women tend to be more emotional. Men, a little more logical per capita. How do you balance you know, being honest with women, but also the emotions and the feelings that kind of come with being a player like yourself? 
So I, ju I just own it all, right? So we just have like a full honesty policy. Like I'm going to see a girl. I'm not going to say I'm going to do s see a friend or, mm. or I'm going to the gym and then behind her back. I was doing that in the beginning and it would just cause a lot of problems and fights and it would mm. hurt her. And, I and then we realized after talking it through, if I'm just fully transparent, then that makes her feel way better about everything rather than having me sneak around or you know, deceive her in any way. Got so it. the full honesty policy works really well for us. If you're a girl and you want to be in a relationship with John Anthony, I, f I feel like that's perfectly fine. Oh, if, yeah. that's the, if that's the lifestyle you want to live and that's the lifestyle that you like or can get used to, because we had uh, Mike, Mike Sartain. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Same thing, you know, has different girlfriends, whatever, but it's very transparent about it. Justin Waller, same mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're open and honest and telling that person, listen, this is my lifestyle, take it or leave it. Well, here's another uh, stark <laughs> example. Let me, get, let me get very specific answers from you guys, and then we'll answer the same question. Would you rather, don't give me some middle of the road answer, you gotta pick one, binary options here. 40 year old man, right, our age, who has been with 1,500 women by age 40, that's one option, or zero women yeah. by age 40. Who would you pick? Everything, everything's equal? You're not going to give us anything Everything's else? equal. What do you mean? They, like money Like they're the same yeah. person, they look the same, they act the same, they make the same money, but someone's been with 1,500 women, and this person by age 40 is still a virgin. Who would you pick? I'd pick zero. Zero? <laughs> I'd pick zero. Yeah, reluctantly you just pick zero. No, you I'd pick say zero. Okay. It, you can, look, you had that gentleman who had zero, and then all of a sudden he knew what he yeah, was doing. Yeah, but he was 28. That's okay. 40? That's okay. Half your life you've gotten zero action? I don't know. Rebecca, I know you're married. James has got game, Harlem game. If you were single, hypothetical, would you pick the 1500, he's honest, or the zero guy? 1500. You would. Please elaborate why. I want a man that knows how to lay it down. But what if he knew how to lay Thank it down? You for your <laughs> honesty. Based on like the information he's received. If he's watching porn all day long well, to what get if that information. His, what if he did his course and he knew where everything was and it's phenomenal? Then I'll take him. Okay, I told you. All right. But you you gave me you gave me yeah. nah, one or the other. You know other. what? You're Stick with your zero award. guy. I like the zero. <laughs> Amber, gonna you're gonna break the, break the tie here. Who are you going with? I know you're going to. Okay. For me, it's really about what happens next. Yes. As opposed if like if that 1500 person is closing the door and we're together and the yes. zero, you know, but if it's just based off history, then 1500. Okay. And explain your rationale. Um, I was talking to this because um, in Israel, I met a lot of guys who were saving themselves uh, for marriage, right? The Orthodox community. Religion, yeah. yeah. Orthodox. And, yeah. Yes. And so I'd have these conversations with, uh, I remember having a conversation with a guy who I was, I was interested in, but he was not going to have any kind of physical relationship with yeah. me. So we were having this argument where he was like, don't you think it's so special that when you choose one person, then you are there with them for life? And I was like, I actually think it's more special to have tried a lot of things and pick one person because you know what's out there. You have the information. Clap it up yeah. for Amber. Oh, that's a great answer. Clap it up. I guess. I, one thing is it means that men need to test drive as many cars as possible. You said this. And at some and point, if it was a, if it was find a, woman, a car. No, not different. women, Amber. Yeah. I'm it's, sorry, but that's where well, we the, differ. The is that I think women should also experience no, 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 a lot. No, 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 no. And know what they're what? getting into. What? No. What? Women, no. Sorry. I don't think. If you, we have, like you said, we have the ability to have a baby. Our birth control is not as mm -hmm. effective as we would like it to be. Okay. And a lot of women have negative reactions to it. What's your saying? What are you saying? I'm saying that you there's a lot of and try and explore. Here, here's here's what she's saying. People. Ready, I'm Rebecca? I'm saying that you shouldn't open your legs to everyone. I'm gonna ask. I trust Rebecca. You should if you want to. There, there's a reason that no, I no, constantly no. invite Rebecca back here because she has <laughs> knowledge. She has experience. She's been on both she's sides Brazilian. of the equation. She's a family <laughs> woman now. She used to be a boss, babe. Like you have a good perspective. I appreciate yeah. it. In your opinion, this is just Rebecca Barrett. Ideally, before someone settles down, man, woman, what is an ideal number, body count wise, partners that a man should have been with? Oh, I right. Mm -hmm. Versus a woman. Just give me some. Give me some. Give me some something. Eighty twenty. Eighty twenty. 
We'll just keep okay. So rule. for for every ten, I love that rule. So for a guy, <laughs> eight woman, two. So you value a man with more experience, and uh, and and men value women with a little Here, less experience. Here's the thing: I've seen weight. First of all, I talk to a lot of women, and I hear the more a woman is promiscuous, the more she's having sex, her whole attitude, her whole demeanor, she's literally ends up being a walking shell of a human. Mm. No, I'm not. I'm saying that like I see women like have dead eyes. It's it's all about why they're having sex. If you're having sex to validate yourself because you are not internally confident and you are relying on external factors to make yourself feel whole, then yeah, you are gonna feel like a shell of a person. But if you're having sex with somebody because you are somebody who, like him, has genuine connections, who likes people, you have to like people to yeah. a certain degree. It can't just be sex for you because you have to talk to these girls. <laughs> for an hour yeah, yeah. At a time. Hey, That's listen, true. I'm a people person. You are a people person. person. <laughs> you are a people person. 1,500 so people person. Right? Well, you have to enjoy yeah. the energy. Exchange. There's, there's an important factor here yeah. too that we're not forgetting, or that we're forgetting. So, like, a lot of clients come to me. I, I agree that, um, you know, I agree with you and also you as well. The zero thing, the problem with that is. <laughs> He's oh, like, not you, I know. No, no, I know. It's okay. Not you, Nat. It's no, here's, here's the problem is that. Like, your 40 year old virgin ass. I get guys that, ha that don't have any experience or don't have much experience, and they're not, like, confident or cool enough to date a pretty yes. girl yet. Yes. So they're like, hey, I only want to get with nines and tens. Okay, have you been with a nine yet? No. Have you been with an eight? No. Seven? Uh, almost. And what happens is, is as they like date their way up, their, their confidence is going to increase. They're going to carry themselves better. Women are going to respond to them better, right? Mm -hmm. So they can't just come out getting their full package girl out of the gate with no experience, right? And I've seen this thousands of times with so many clients. They have to like work their way up. It's of not, course, because they're going to well, be intimidated by these pretty girls. Hundred percent agree. What's the old saying that women have to kiss a couple frogs or toads before they find Prince Charming? Do mm -hmm. you recommend that women, uh, that close. men, kind of you know take down a <laughs> Take down a you know funny three for a second, and then you know maybe like <laughs> I, a I told four, who, you know <laughs> drunk goggles. Like, do you recommend just kind of like starting at basic levels, work not, your way up? Not that low. I, I tell <laughs> them, where do you start? I tell them don't. I'm sleep. not condoning a three or anything I, below a five. I tell, them, we're clear. I tell them don't <laughs> sleep with a girl you're not attracted to. So don't yeah. don't go talk to any girls you're not attracted to. Okay. They're like, well, should I just bang this girl that I that I think is ugly just to get the experience? And I say no. Because that's gonna have like a psychological impact. Yeah, exactly. they're gonna devalue themselves okay. because they're like, okay, what 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 does that say about me? Yeah. Well, Especially if you're associating sex with something that's not even like pleasurable for you. If it's like a, a transaction completely, you yeah. know, it's just completely self-serving. That that's definitely yeah, like toxic. Um, last couple questions. I want to get through this. By the way, you know what this conversation is kind of reminding me of? So Andrew Schultz, shout out to you, Schultz, if you see this. Have I you ever it. seen his special? Yes. Where he's like, you know, guys, girls. We got to come together, right? We're, oh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're yeah. on the same page here. We're not that far apart. And someone in the audience is like, yeah, what do you mean? Yeah, of course we are. He's like, he's like, listen, I was at one of these uh, feminist marches recently. You know, they're all shouting, free the nipple. And, and he's like, yeah, totally agree. Free it out there. And they're like, uh, we deserve to have an abortion. He's like, you should. Right? Uh, equal, equal pay for equal work. He's like, fuck yeah, get to work. And he's like, the more and more I hear you women talk, he's like, are you fuck boys or feminists? Yes. Which one is it? So that's what this conversation is mine. Shout out to you, Andrew Schultz. You're, you're a great dude. You yes. have um, this thing, and then I want to kind of get to this red pill stuff and we'll wrap up. You, by the way, you're spending money on ads out there. Anytime I go on on YouTube, boom, John Anthony Lifestyle, mm. boom, boom, boom. They're just targeting you. you. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck boy, feminist. How, we got you. That's how I ended up here, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, you said that there's a five-word text that any dude can send a woman to pique her interest. Oh, it's my opener. Yeah, what so is I've that? Been, for 10 years, and I want to hear the girls' opinions on this, yeah. I just walk up to girls in public and say, hi, I want to meet you real quick. Hi, I want to meet you. Hi, I want to meet you real quick. I, I like that. I'm not mad at that. Wow. That's hard. When you have three girls with divergent opinions, divergent lifestyles, all saying, hmm, okay. Because it's, it's not fancy, it's not gamey, yeah. it's, it's direct and it's and authentic. It's also saying That's meet. what you say in yeah. person? Yeah. Or but what about via text? Uh, over text, I usually just like layer in some questions. I, I give them multiple things to respond to, right? So in Brazil, I say, well, I'm from New York, but I've been living in Brazil for a few years. Um, you're pretty. I want to get to know you, right? But it's basically like gives them like three or four things to comment on. So I say, yeah. oh, you speak Portuguese. Oh, you're from New York. All this, all that. Uh, so in, over text, it's something that's going to have a high response rate. So I'm trying to either generate curiosity or 
have something that they can latch onto and, and respond well, all to. All you just gotta say is that I'm American, living in Brazil, <laughs> and they're in. Yeah. in. See, Bobby. Green card. By the way, you know we you hear so many Portuguese. people. Follow Portuguese. You hear so many like pickup lines and cheesy things. It doesn't it's work. Like, you know, yeah. are you an angel? Do you just fall from heaven? And it's like, I, I are your feet hurt? Yeah. Are you, I mean, you've been running through my mind all day. But your line of, hi, just wanted to meet you real quick. Yeah. Ugh, love it. All the women love it. So shout out to use you for that. coming up with Me, that. Yeah. I like guys, you know, you know what's funny guys, though? use the game. We're leaving. We're giving That's you on Southcast. I was, I was running a lot of programs in San Diego, and before I left, I got slept about 200 girls there in 2014, 2015. Before I left, like I was out at a bar one weekend. I just slipped that in there. 250 girls. No, I was at a bar one of the weekends, and I walked up to her, hey, can I meet real quick? And she's like, oh, I'm, I'm not gonna fall for that line. And I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, five other people have said that to me tonight. <laughs> no. and there was like different students of mine. That's why I had to move every year and a half, two years, because gotcha. you start running to the same girls. <laughs> wow. You know, you, you make an army. You, no, you start to build like a little bit of a reputation, right? Because right. you find out, oh, you slept with my coworker, you slept with my roommate, mm. you slept with two of my roommates, you slept with my sister, right? And then Jesus. eventually it's like time to move. But now we're in Sao Paulo, which is like the largest city. It's 12 million people, 25 million metropolitan. So it's kind of like unlimited. You know, you can never run, run through that, right? So I think we're going to That'd be put. amazing if you're in Brazil. They're like, <laughs> you're like, hey, I just want to meet you real quick. They're like, you must know John Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, it's like, I just want to meet you. Yeah. It's like, no, nah, I ain't falling for that one. I ain't being 1591. Uh, I want to address, um, sure, there's a lot of people. You know, we have a lot of people that come on the show. I kind of view myself as an arbiter of conversation. I, I have a lot of respect for a lot, of, a lot of the guys in the red pill community. We have other guys in blue pill, whatever you want, pickup artists, you know, money guys, successful guys, dating coaches, lots of different women, housewives, porn stars. We're here to have a conversation. Let the audience decide who they enjoy, who they appreciate, yeah, who they dislike. I really respect that. All that's good. A, that's how it should be. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Um, what's your beef with the red pill? Mm -hmm. And then also, what's your beef with MGTOW? Could you go one by one? Yeah, so red pill and MGTOW. The big problem with red pill, or uh, any of these movements really, is that they're trying to make guys become like a victim. So the mm -hmm. guy's like, oh, all women are against us, women are the enemy, all women are, are sluts, or all women are thoughts, right? And they give a lot of false statistics. I know you had like Rolo Tomasi on the show before, but he's very guilty of perpetrating lots of false statistics where he paints like the common American woman to be like this massive slut who's just trying to fuck you over. And that's just not the case. And, and he does, he's not saying that from experience. He, said, he admits in his book, The Rational Male, he's only been with 40 girls, right? And again, it's not a contest, but it's, I think, brainwashing a lot of guys in a toxic way. And you watch shows like Fresh and Fit, and I get lots of these people that come out of those movements, right. and they're like women haters. And they come on and they resent girls and their confrontation with girls mm. and they turn into like a Myron Gaines, which is this, you know, a guy that doesn't like women and treats them poorly. And I'm really against that. So I actively speak out against that stuff a lot. So, so you mentioned Rolo, you mentioned uh, Myron Fresh and Fit, friends of mine, been on the show, respect. You, you can't say that what they're doing is all bad. Meaning if you have a bone to pick with them, that's cool. I'll yeah. let you address that. I'm not speaking for them. I'm not speaking for you. But not everything they do is negative and hateful. Yeah. So is there anything that they are doing, those guys are even red pilled that you do respect? I think, you know, anything that's like a positive message or an empowering message that's gonna lift guys up to help them be the best version of themselves is good. But all this stuff about making excuses or trying to blame women, that's where I, I draw the line. Gotcha. Woo! And now and now and now the MGTOW community, this is a community that quite frankly I don't get, I don't understand. I, don't I think they're they're basically saying yeah, we are done with women. We are done dating women. We are done dealing yeah. with women. We're done marrying women. We're and done with what? anything with women. Maybe I'll spend some money at a strip club, but that's it. <laughs> Break down this They're MGTOW is black pill community. Black? What? It's black pill? Yeah, so MGTOW so. stands for men going their own way. Yeah. And they, they just think, like, I'm going to live life without women. I think that's incredibly sad and disappointing <laughs> yeah. because women are, you know, a great addition to life, not just for sex, or that's just, like, one part. Mm -hmm. But these guys... I, again, I've had client, thousands of clients over 10 years, and a lot of these guys, they tried the pickup stuff, and most of the coaches are scammers, unfortunately, right? They have systems that don't work, or they're just trying to rip people off. And so they spend time, effort, and money, and eventually they just get sick of it. Mm -hmm. And they say, this isn't gonna work out. So then they say, oh, it must be my looks, and they go to black pill. It must be women that's the problem, they go to red pill. Or they say, oh, it's just women in general it will never work out for me, so I'm gonna mm -hmm. live my life without women. And those are all terrible paths to choose. And I really try to go and, and uplift them and show them, like, yes, you are good enough. Try to be the best version of yourself. Here's how you talk to girls in a club. Here's how you 
you know, interact on a date. Here's how you text. And then all of a sudden, and this is the most fulfilling part about my job, they're like, I never realized I could date a girl of this level. I never realized I could have a threesome. I thought that was just going to be something I'd watch in porn. And they text me, and I become friends with a lot of my clients on a personal level, mm -hmm. even after I've trained them. And just hearing like the success and the fulfillment they're getting and how much better that was for life than any money they made or any stuff like that yeah. is really fulfilling. And, and they never realized they had it in them. Mm -hmm. And that's the position I was in, too. I thought I would never date my whole life, probably. Mm -hmm. you know, I'll tell you my yeah. issue with the, with the, I guess, the MGTOW. Uh, I don't know much about this world because if there's anything that I stand for, it's interacting with women. Yeah. Yeah. I'm friends with women. I hang out with women. I date women. It's good. Like I... I have, a, I have a sister, I have a mother, I have a girlfriend, like, I, Amber, like, I, I love women. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I'd rather hang out with two or three of my boys and a ton of women. Mm -hmm. That's just me. But I feel like there's two camps in the MGTOW community. There's the camp that was like, listen, I was married, I had kids, you know, she took my shit, I took all my money, and I'm fucking done with these bitches. I kind of get that. Oh, yeah. You've been burned. Mm -hmm. Okay, now maybe you're scorned, scorned lover, you know, that whole thing. I kind of get that. The other camp is, I don't get women. I hate women. They uh, fuck women, but they've never been with the woman. They're not like friends in, with like women. Incels. They're not dating women. Mm -hmm. Incels. They're yeah. just like it seems like victim mentality yeah. at its highest form. Mm -hmm. This is. The, I'm like, well, so what do you mean? You're, you're just a 28 year old dude that hates women now? Like, what's happening right here, bro? Like, improve your life. Figure it out. Make some money. Get in the gym. Talk to women, get laid. You got this, buddy. Go and en enroll in John Anthony lifestyle. You could be at 1591, no problem. So <laughs> what's, the, what's your situation with these MGTOW? Do you understand what I'm saying? These two different yeah. camps? Well, it, but the problem is, like I said, is a lot of them, like, they actively try a whole lot, and they give it a chance, and the years just start falling off the calendar, the decades fall off the calendar, and it becomes, like, too hard on them emotionally and psychologically. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of them just give up because they think there's no light at the end of the tunnel. So what I try to do is give them like a straightforward, practical, step-by-step -step system that's going to deliver results immediately. Like, let me get your girl's thoughts on this. So when a guy first comes on the program, we hook him up with a professional photographer. Mm. They get a pro photo shoot. And then we have a team of hot girls that picks the best five photos out of hundreds of photos. Oh. Smart. Then we oh. apply FaceApp to it. So he's going from average photos to pro photos. Wait, to what do you mean FaceApp? You, like you're face tuning, tuning his face? Yeah. <laughs> uh, girls no, do it. Face girls do dude's it. face. No, but not in a, not in a catfishing yeah. way. Like we just like Hollywood too on face app, right? Like the most yeah. subtle. You just like smooth the skin a little yeah. bit. Yeah. It's funny. It it's what we do too. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, and then I write their bio for them. And then that starts giving them a nine day difference in matches. So I say, I don't care like what your dating situation is right now, how bad you are with girls or what your results are like. We're going to put you through this process. Now you're going to have lots of mm. matches coming in. Yeah. Once you get a match, follow these scripts to get the phone number. Mm and it, it handles all control paths. Once you get a phone number, follow these scripts to get a date. So now they went from getting a pro photo shoot to now having a lot of dates. And then I show them how to do it out in public, bars and clubs and during the daytime, and how to make those dates be successful. And as I said, we, we have like the coaching calls to find the bottlenecks and clear them away really fast. And so it opens a whole new world for them. And it, it brings a whole bunch of confidence into their life, which translates into their career, their family relationships, their friend relationships. Like it. It's like the cornerstone of their happiness. I tell you what, I thought the girls would be like, you're a piece of shit, 1,500. <laughs> They're all like, okay, I kind of get it. If you're honest, I don't care what you do. Okay, thank you, Amber. Last question <laughs> for you, John, and then I want to ask the girls some questions. Um, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, you know, this whole red flag, green flag. I don't know if it's a red flag. It's a green flag. I don't know if it's a red flag. I don't know. Kind of got a couple of red flags. I don't know, this whole thing. Uh, for someone that's been with 1,500 plus women, what are the, the biggest red flags or what are the types of women that men should avoid? Like, so for me, it's entitled high maintenance women. Yeah. It's like, I just can't do with it. I don't care how hot you are. Well, that's like, what I meant. I just any can't girl, do any it. Any girl that says she's like too good for a coffee date. Like I've, I've had girls be like, really coffee? Like I'll never go to get a coffee. And it's like, okay, I'll find someone else to get a coffee. Cause that's, it, it shouldn't, you shouldn't like base your first date on, oh, are we going to get dinner? Are we going to do something okay. expensive or whatever? So that just takes care of itself. Or like any girl that's you know being dr like super dramatic or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Usually that's going to cause problems. Or girls are just playing games, right? If girls are like ignoring frequently on the messages or, or playing games like power struggles, that usually just continues on, on and on, right? So I'm looking for a girl that's like low drama, cool to hang out with, fun, isn't a liar, has like a decent moral system, has ambitions, has interests and stuff like that. She doesn't need to be like this you know extreme example of like the perfect woman. But just like 
has a bunch of cool stuff going on and we and we have a good bond in chemistry. What is the average like from beginning to end tryst? What is the time frame? Meaning How long I made I a girl, we hung out, it was a couple weeks, we had a good time, all right, she's off, she has a boyfriend now, or she moved, whatever, like it's it, like, meaning like if there's 1500 women they're not yeah. i've been dating 1500 women for 10 years no it's like it's like one to, night stands give me like, some it's time like two frame. to four months with a lot of them so wow. like if it if it's going good that and some of them even last for over a year right so it's i just if it, if it was good chemistry good sex etc then i just like let it run its course and if eventually they want something more serious i tell them like i'm not looking for that right now or i'm you know i'm too busy with work or whatever it's their choice that they want to stay around but Typically, after like two to four months, either I'll get bored on some level, or they want something more serious, or you know something else comes up in one of our lives or whatever, uh, or you have a fight and you know go your separate ways there. Do you ghost? Uh, no, mm. no ghost. By I the always, way, I always tell them, you know, I always at least keep them. Of the there, fifteen ninety yeah. to soon to be fifteen ninety one, like any minute, <laughs> <laughs> how many were one night stands? What percentage? Um, it's hard to put a figure on that, but. I would I would say probably less than half. Okay, but half. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. So seven hundred plus cause I, I, women, like because it, it's you know, it's one night. So most I would say a lot of them are are more than once. Right. Like if it, if it was good enough the first time, then I usually want to see them again. Unless mm. unless there was like some kind of thing where it's like oh I didn't like her personality or like, you know, there's some big like deal breaker thing. Okay. Would I you say that your again. sex drive is absurdly high? Not necessarily. Really? I, mean, I, I started taking uh, testosterone replacement therapy because right, I'm, I'm 39. Yeah. Yeah. But just to get it up to optimal levels again, right? Because I all the nights like partying and being out and drinking and all that stuff. When uh, I did a test like four or five years ago, it was in like the low 300s. So I wanted to get up to like the 700 to 900 range. He's back, baby. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> let, let me let me get um, Rebecca's uh, opinion on something, and then we're gonna play a quick game. We'll wrap up. All right. Rebecca, we always hear this term: happy wife, happy life. Okay, yeah. you seem like a pretty happy wife, mm -hmm. right? We had this conversation the other day about forget about happy wife, happy life, happy king, happy kingdom. I'm like, oh, play all right, we're now. <laughs> so, in your opinion, what is the perfect balance? Happy wife, happy life, happy king, happy kingdom. How does it work in your in your household, and what is the best balance? Um, I think that I'm the only. I wouldn't say the only reason why I'm happy, but a lot of the reason why I'm happy is because. My husband is happy. Mm. It's pretty straightforward. And it, mm. I don't, it's, it, my husband, that's the thing, it's like men are very easy to please. It doesn't, it's not, it doesn't take like rocket science to figure out men and what makes them happy. Like my husband comes home, eats a hot meal, sits down, you know, decompresses, and many nights we, you know, have sex. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> said, What's going on? I was like, okay, I mean, all right. Fifteen ninety, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, what? but I think too, you know, I he makes me happy. My family makes me happy. Living in my purpose makes me happy. So, if you could only pick one, happy wife, happy life, happy king, happy kingdom, what would you pick? Happy king, happy kingdom. Wow! Because you're the queen. To, because if he's happy, trust me. Sis, um, where is my camera? Right there, right there. <laughs> Sis, right there. he's gonna make you happy. Mm. I'm just saying, like, make treat a man right, and he'll make you the happiest woman. What is Maybe Dave? Treat the right man right. Treat the right man right. Yeah, yeah. But you that's have true. that's treat the thing. The right you right. have to have discernment, and I want to talk about the black pill, like make yeah. The thing that's missing in this conversation is accountability. Mm. Okay. You have to have accountability. Both men and women cannot be victims. If you have that victim mentality of that victim mindset, you're going to be miserable. Mm -hmm. It goes both ways. That's yeah. the that's the one thing I'll say for men and women. That's pretty equal. That's why we love Rebecca Barrett. That's yeah. why she's here. She's dropping down. <laughs> you know what Dave Chappelle says about why you know a man is easy to please. It's Good like. Accent. Oh, this is old Dave Chappelle, not Smokey Old Grove. He's like, uh, it's pretty easy to please a man. Uh, you know, you get home, you know, shut the fuck up, make him a sandwich, play with his balls a little bit, he's good. Like, basically, and that's basically what that's you're saying. That's basically the M.O. right there. Yeah. Like, uh -huh. I mean, if, he wa if your husband wants sex, just give him sex. 
for fuck's sake. Like, you hear that, ladies? <laughs> like, Rebecca geez. Barrett Adam Sazic, 2024. Okay. If your husband wants sex, give, give him sex. Him. And you're going to feel happy and be less stressed out and less miserable if you All just right. have sex. Respect to you. Happy <clears throat> king, happy kingdom. All right, we're going to play a quick game <laughs> with our friend John Anthony, and then we're going to do some super chats. We're wrapping up. John, you've met our three friends today. Guys, this is a game. Don't take it too serious. Oh, you know Natalia, you know Rebecca, you know Amber. You've got great pickup lines. You've got great game. You've got a system. You've got a funnel. If you were going to cold approach each of these three women that you've mm. just met, I just want to hear how you would approach them. And you can't use, that line. hi, I just <laughs> wanted to get to know you. Quick. So no, start with quick. Amber. Then go to the married woman, Rebecca. <laughs> She's married. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. And Mary. then go to Natalia. Use... Give some guys some insight. Amber, Rebecca, Natalia. So this, okay, this is assuming she's not married, or you want to Yeah, this is just fun and games. Here. Oh, right. he's, he's saying, oh, maybe oh, she maybe. is married, and you just want to tell, you know. Okay, we won't do that. So, anymore. okay, so, yeah. so Amber. Game, game for Amber. Amber was saying backstage, right, that she's, uh, you want to just act it out? Yeah, go ahead. All right, so basically, you were saying backstage how you were, a, she was a voiceover actor for a childhood. <laughs> for a, for a cartoon. A cartoon in Brazil, right? Mm -hmm. My girlfriend's Brazilian. She actually invited us to her show tomorrow night, which you might be there too, right? Yeah. So we would come to the show. I would probably try to figure out if you were bisexual. We would... How? <laughs> by asking you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when we would just go to the show, hang out with her, and then if she was bisexual, we would try to take her back to I the place. I feel like this is no longer hypothetical. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we'll be at your show tomorrow night, so and are you bisexual or not? That, that one honestly was partially planned, but I mean, after what I said, I don't even know if she'd be interested. <laughs> <laughs> 1591, da 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 da. Don't worry, okay. you have the millionaire so in the chat. So what, what I'm hearing is you're, you're taking her information, and what has she done? Voiceover actress, Brazil. Show and eh, my, my girl every, three every some girl, bingo bango. Every girl loves my chick, right? And it, and my, I actually texted my girl, and she's like, "Oh, that was like one of my favorite stars as a child." And this yeah. is the girl with the actual voice. That's so, why he wants her to hit me up on Instagram. Yeah. Amazing. He wants me to check. What her I would profile. respect slash find very red flaggy is if <laughs> this girl wasn't even a fan of any of your work, but he's just using this whole line to be like. Brazil, would, voiceover right, actress. Right. How I about a threesome? I wouldn't, do, I wouldn't do that, though. No, I know. I'm yeah. just, this is no, a yeah, game. Yeah. We're playing game. The game okay. must hype me up. So thank you. <laughs> he, he hyped you up. Respect. Show up at your show. Next thing you know, threesome, what just happened here? Okay. 1591. Rebecca. 1591, Amber. <laughs> Amber. Amber, as much as I respect John and you know, enjoy his company, don't go home with him tomorrow. Don't, don't okay? be 1591. Don't do it. You're better than that. There's some guy out there. He's at zero. He wants to get to one. Zero. Okay. Go zero. Zero to hero. Zero. Rebecca, for the sake of this game, not married. I already know what he's gonna say. Well, that oh. would be that would be a similar angle. She said she's Brazilian. Yes. yes. Right. So. Oi, would, tudo bem? And uh, <laughs> hey, you follow Portuguese oh, fluent to me. Yeah. Okay. So I, I would speak to her in Portuguese. Say, hey, my girl's here from Brazil. We should all hang out. Find would, out if I'm bisexual. <laughs> Yes. Hey, there's something I'd like to find out about you. <laughs> just want to come over to my house, bring some red, bring some white. We can have some fun. Next red, thing you white. know, okay. So Finding I, common ground is, I think, what we're saying. Yeah. Here. Same thing in sales, by the way. Yeah. I'm now, gonna, can yeah. I say something yeah, yeah, really quick? Ahead. I've noticed something. He listens and pays attention to what the girls are saying. So specifics. That's specific, the key. Yeah. Be specific to us, and you get because he the got girl. the things from the from the green room. We were having a. a conversation back hmm. there we were all having conversation and he was picking up little things so that he keeps in his mind uh -huh. and he's like okay i can use that okay so listening we talked about earlier stop talking about yourself gentlemen uh listen to the women all right well, now guys, for most the guys would just come in with cheesy lines and the girls would roll their eyes yeah. right but i'm looking for specific angles i wouldn't have gone up to her because she's yeah. married right You're being real the third lady here yeah she... natalia is going to be the toughest not to crack because these two women voted for the 1500 plus guy. Natalia wants that Sigma virgin in the corner, so she's gonna be a little tougher. So John, what's your angle? So Natalia arrived with you, so at first I would screen logistics, like, mm -hmm. oh, what, like, are you guys together? What's the deal there, right? Like you she's my Uber driver. <laughs> <laughs> nice car too. Yeah. But again, that would just How be- How many Uber drivers roll with a Range Rover chick? Right. That would just be a thing okay. where I'd probably say like, oh, like, here's my girl that's in town, like the three of us should hang out, and then it would. Say just you be, don't have a girl. How would you do it? 
if I didn't have a girl, I would say we should hang out. So I would just invite her out casually, like, oh, do you know a good spot to get drinks? Are you free tonight? I would just ask her out, right? I would just very directly ask her to, like, let's meet for drinks somewhere at a cool spot. How many times, what's your, uh, you know how they say, like, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take? You know, you go to the Hall of Fame in yeah. baseball. If you bat 300, that's three out of that's, 10. Yeah, so what's your rejection bounce back ability? So what I, what oh, I yeah, found good is question. When Thanks, when Matt. I, I do this for a living. Around, around <laughs> the time that I hit 1,000 girls, right, I looked at my phone, how many contacts, and there was, like, around 10,000 contacts. So I realized it's about 10% of my phone numbers I'm actually hooking up with. Amazing. That's, that is 10%. literally sales 101 right yeah. there. Guys, I say this all the time. You have sales no, and yeah, dating. But but I, you know, I say, but there, there's, no guys, there's guys that claim, like, there's dating coaches that put out the fake stats, like, oh, I can close 100% of the girls I talk to or 95%. I say that's bullshit. Yeah. Even at a high level, mm -hmm. I'm only getting 10%. Right? And once I started living with my chick, now I'm at 1590, but I have like 17,000 phone numbers, so it's dropped even a little bit lower because I'm spending more time with her and on my business. Okay. Um, let's get to these super chats real quick, by the way. Uh, you're how tall? You're like 6'3? 6'4. 6'4. Tatted up. That's pretty in that's shape, recent. dude. That's recent. The basketball. Okay, years how are. much of a role does height, tatted up, bad boy, so, I'm banging your girl when you're not looking <laughs> type of thing? How much does that play into the pickup? Uh, so I, I didn't I didn't get my first tattoo until I was like 35, and I got wow. the I got the rest of these in the past two years in Brazil. So like I didn't I wasn't tattooed. I was skinny through a lot of the game. I was because I, like I said I wasn't prioritizing the gym and I was huh. drink, drinking like a fish, eating like shit, not sleeping much. Um, but I get clients that are tall and jacked. Like that stuff helps. I get clients that are tall and jacked that are virgins, and they're like I go on a date and it goes for three hours and then the girl leaves or I have no idea how to text, or I have no idea what to message on Tinder. I don't know what to say once I talk to the girl. And guys think it's just an automatic ticket. Once they're in shape, all the girls are just gonna no. fall in their lap. Once they make money, the girls are gonna fall in their lap. That's not how it works. No, there's outer game, there's inner game. Outer game, you're tall, you're good looking, you're, you got tattoos, you know, you got... And then there's inner game, confidence, ambition, way of words, are you humor. listening or not? Humor. Yeah, humor, humor. I'm, right. I, I'm constantly cracking Are you jokes. a voiceover actor? This is what we're trying to do here. And I respect to you. Thank you, John. Let's That's get right. some super chats, and then we'll get to our happy ending. And wherever Jorge is, we'll get some smoke out here. So, Natalia, you ready to read and do great? Um, yes. Oh, I thought you said something. Yes, I am. Dells. I'm trying to get the rest of them. Um, so we'll read this one. I lost a few of them. If Delhi can help me find the rest of them. I have um, Rogan Chomps. Uh, I also have to say Michael Sartain, Adam, and John are the only guys in the space so I've seen in the space that with attractive women. I agree with John's analogy that you wouldn't trust a homeless guy with as a finance guy. <laughs> that's so that was a good true, one. That's true, right? A lot, of, a lot of the dating coaches have girls are below average looking. And if that's their, I mean, they keep that a secret. So I made a video that's called The Ugly Wives and, dating, uh, and Girlfriends of Dating Coaches, mm. which is, you know, pretty crass. <laughs> But I showed like this guy's with, you know, a girl that people would rate like a two or a three. Yeah. And they're giving advice on how to how to get girls. Whether you like it or not, you know, men are judged by the women that are around them. Like if I see a business guy that I don't know anything about, and he walks into a room in a business meeting, and his wife is just sloppy, fat, gross. I'm thinking, what yeah. are you doing, buddy? I can't. Yeah. You see some dude who's kind of a nerdy, you don't know. And all of a sudden, a girl shows up, and you're like. Okay, Bill. What's up, player? And he's like, "Why? Wow, what I do?" I'm like, "You, you go, know Bill. You, you know what you did, Bill. You laying it down with that Harlem game." <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nat, you're doing Shout great reading. Yes. Um, Jorge. <laughs> What's happening right now? <laughs> Guys, welcome to the Jorge Gonzalez show. <laughs> Delhi, where you at? We got some super chats we need to read. We're wrapping Delhi. up, guys. Oh, let's get on the ball here. Um, no, I, I think we'll just finish off with that one. Um, I can't find the rest of them. Right okay. Now. Does Delhi need anything? All right, guys, no, gotcha. All right. Awesome. I don't know what just happened here at the end, but you can start doing some smoke out there. Jorge's on a fucking business call. <laughs> Delhi's smoking a joint in the corner. I don't know what just happened here, but we're back. Anyway, uh, it is now time for the happy ending uh, episode, a version. What is it? A happy ending segment. Happy ending. You happy call it happy ending? That's what you call it the happy ending. Yeah, it's a ha Clever. let's have a who's, happy who's ending. Who's given the happy ending? We all are, and here's the deal. <laughs> Everyone gets the opportunity to say um, what they thought about this episode, what they'd like to people to take away, and drive people to your YouTube channel or social media profile. So Rebecca, we love having you here. You're always dropping game. We have with ultimate respect for you. Final thoughts, happy ending. Where do you want to drive traffic to? You're getting in close to 100,000 subscribers. I know, guys. Get me to 100,000 subscribers. I'm at 88 thousand i think oh right there i know i'm right there yeah 
come on now. Rebecca Barrett, YouTube. Uh, I am Rebecca Barrett on Instagram. If you want some controversy, if you want some hot takes, I'm there for you. Guys, subscribe right now. Rebecca Barrett's channel. She's a beast. And by the way, get your girl to subscribe to Rebecca yeah. Barrett's channel. And She's for dropped yeah. And we're doing, um, so me, Ali, and a few other wives are doing um, a wife, we do it Wife Life. Uh, it's <laughs> Thursdays, once a month. Um, we keep rotating it on different platforms. Um, but if you want to learn how to be a wife from different wives, join us for yeah. Wife Life. Guys, yeah. get your girl to subscribe to Rebecca. We're trying to get her up to 100,000 ASAP, okay? Yeah. Amber Joy Lane in the house. She was the, the OG on the Sauce cast. Yeah. She reinvented herself. We invented ourselves. She's back and better than ever. Amber, where can we find you? Where can My they takeaways. slide in that DM? Yeah, give us First, a takeaway. First, the happy endings. Go ahead. This is a happy. This is your happy ending. You can be a phony, but don't be a scammer. Oh yeah, that's fine. Try the world, so you know which girl to give yours. Hmm. And just be honest, and I don't give a fuck what you do. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Amber Joy Lane. You can find me there on Instagram. And if you come to my show this weekend, you might see a very different show. I don't know what's going on. Amazing. <laughs> All right. John Anthony from Brazil, thank you for being here. Uh, where can people find you? What do you want your overall message to be? So the overall message is that a lot of guys are just selling themselves short. Right? For, for anything I've learned from coaching for 10 years is that most guys don't realize that they have it in them to date hot girls and date their dream girls. So they think like, you know, they're just always gonna be destined for failure or ugly girls or taking whatever they can get. So guys need to think of an empowering message, right, that's gonna lift them up because that's gonna really drive a lot of their success forward. But it's hard in the, in the industry because there's so many people that are trying to screw them over and so many people that are just gonna chew them up and spit them out. So I try to have, you know, we have over a thousand testimonials on a page. Um, my website's uh, johnanthonylifestyle.com, YouTube channel, John Anthony Lifestyle. And we have uh, a week program that I consider the industry leading program by far, because most guys are sleeping with one to two girls a week, even from the first beginning. So they, they get about eight to 16 girls over two months, and they're able to put regulars on rotation about one per week, right? And then, Rotations. But they, they can find a girlfriend as well. It's, I leave that up to them, right? But uh, that's PlatinumDatingSystem.com. So that's our premier coaching program is PlatinumDatingSystem.com. Awesome. Do you saw that G-Spot video individually? Like <laughs> pass it along to some people. We have, we have that for free on YouTube. Nat, go ahead and give your final takeaway, and then we're going to wrap up. Jorge. Smoke. Um, final takeaway. Uh, I thought today was a great episode. We got mm -hmm. to hear different perspectives of everybody in different places, even like different countries people live in, too. Um, I mean, overall, I think it's a matter of everybody needs to figure out what they're looking for and what they want. Um, do it safely, of course. Um, and I'm rooting for the guys out there with zero. That's my <laughs> Nat likes those Sigma versions. <laughs> oh, and of course, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Tomorrow's episode is a special oh, episode. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, so make sure you guys tune in because we're going to have some fun tomorrow. We're going to have some fun tomorrow. Anyway, fun thank tomorrow. you, Natalia, for being on the panel today. She's yes. usually over there. You desk. can do the smoke now. Uh, thank you, Rebecca, as Ooh. always. Thank you, Amber. These are the regular glorious women of the Saucecast. We got some smoke <laughs> coming out here. Oh John, gosh. thank you for being here. I'm on we fire. do this show for you guys out there to improve your money skills, your business skills, your networking skills, your skills with women, your skills being uh, a man, improvement. We do this for you. We want to see you get paid, laid, and do, do it, it your, your way. way. Tomorrow, my birthday, special episode, just Natalia and I. Yes. Yeah. Delivering game and value galore. Tune in tomorrow. Please share this video with friends. Like, subscribe. We do this for you. No cost. This is free game out there. Save that money. We'll see you tomorrow on my birthday. We out. Bye.